Good evening, everybody, at least to everybody on the East Coast or, you know, later. Um, I guess if it gets much later, it's going to start getting into uh, <clears throat> early morning for some people. But for the most part, if you're catching this live and you're mostly <laughs> you know, in the eastern half of the United States, good evening. Uh, I've got another show. Um, this one might go on for a little while. Um, I'm not sure how long I'm going to be able to tolerate it, but I, I have listened to quite a bit of it. Um, and it is Darth getting back into a conversation about evolution. Not, and it's not even really back. It doesn't take much to get Darth talking about this, especially with people who know more about it than he does, um, mostly because I think he, he credits himself with knowing a lot of this stuff, but I think most of it he's gleaned from um, either very generic sources, and then if he wants an explainer about something difficult, I think he just goes straight to like an apologist or answers in Genesis, which he frequently will mention without any kind of irony or any kind of like, you know, any kind of like, you know, you know <laughs> clarification or anything like, oh, well, answers in Genesis or any of these other kinds of things. So he'll, he'll get his info from them. And, and they're, they've been proven, you know, multiple times to be full of crap. So, yeah. So this one was, I think, from about a week ago, and uh, the guy that he's having a conversation with is named Neon. Um, I don't know Neon, and I'm not sure what room this happened in, um, but Darth engages with this guy for quite a long time, and um, as the description mentions very quickly, he gets really sleazy in this one, uh, mutes him a lot, as uh, Tom mentions in his his title, um, but it's also just engaging in some really childish, this isn't even rhetoric, um, it's just stupidity. Um, so, and most of that's available and, and obvious at the, within the first half hour. Um, no, actually within the first like five minutes. So I'm going to say hello to a few people here. Michael Deaton, thank you very much. And hello. 8.30 to awesome. Hello, hello. Pinworm is here. Forking Gulliman. Hmm. Uh, don't often catch these live, but it's knocking on 2,300 over here, but I will stay as long as I can. Oh, okay. Not sure where you're from at 2,300 hours. Um, yeah, not sure where that's going to put you. Yeah, good to have you, Jettis. Nice to see you here. Joey Crikey, got to say I love these Spatchcock reviews. Uh, Joey Crikey, are you from Australia? I, I'm just wondering, you know, because, you know... <laughs> What with the word crikey in there? JL Warren is here. Good to see you. Let's see. Big Toto fan. I don't know that I've seen you in the in the live chat before. Good to see you. Um, Christopher Mowdy. Perfect timing. I, well, I try. Mr. Lumpkin is here. Let's see. Henry Hansen is here. The Monk is here. Rat Snake. I finally caught one live. Well, I'm glad you did. Mo Darth, Titan Drover. Yeah, I mean, it's always... Uh, there's been a lot of Darth lately. With with this shutdown of Clubhouse, it seems like everybody's kind of concentrated in some of the... You know, in like the same, like, you know, three to five servers, I guess, over on, on Discord. So they're all just like, you know... Everybody's keeping close tabs on everybody else, it feels like. Bro, hi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, <laughs> Jail Warren. And Cherry picking Eugene Coonan. Yes, he does. Um, that's a little bit of a spoiler alert, but, I, you know... For any of us that have been following Darth, it's not much of a, not much one. Simus Funk is here. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Always nice to have you live in the chat. Um, Charlie Reed, hi from Thailand. Hello. I don't know what time it is in Thailand. Is it the following day for you? I think it is. Like early morning. And Chronchomatic. Or Chonchomatic, excuse me. There's no R there. Good to see. You. Okay, so with that, um, I guess I'm just going to get started. The, again, there's not a lot of um, bro guy, like a bro that's a guy. Okay, I will try to remember that. I, I might end up turning that G into some kind of weird like ugh, thing, you know? And yeah, who knows? Um, but yeah, the, not again. Not too much context with this one. He's talking with Neon. Uh, JL Warren says Neon is a good dude. He seems like an okay guy, and it seems like based on this conversation that he knows what he's talking about. And it sounds like he has a better handle on what he's talking about than Darth does. And I'll give this as a little bit of just to kind of like tilt your viewing 
uh, just to kind of bias you against it. You know, when somebody asks kind of a general question and then the guy, you know, they ask it to a person, right? And that guy or girl, you know, that human being starts responding in a way that you can tell that they're going to try to like, you know, step down from their level of knowledge, try to meet you halfway. And maybe they're not doing it great. Maybe they're going to start off with like, oh, well, first of all, if you if you start with cellular mitosis or something like this, for example, and then you you know that that person is probably a black belt in that topic, and you might only be, I don't know, a white belt. I don't know what the lower levels are. I, I know it changes from one, you know, from various ones, but you know what I mean. Um, you just kind of want to. And and Darth asked this goofy question to start out, and it's pretty apparent to me that Neon knows what he's talking about, and Neon starts getting kind of frustrated with what Darth's doing here, and it's not it's not unreasonable for him to be frustrated with what Darth's doing here, especially when Darth pulls off something, which I will probably repeat at least three times when we get there to really drive home what a scumbag he is in this conversation. So with that said, let's see if we get this going. Oh, Daily Shadow's here. Good to see you, Daily Shadow. And thank you again uh, for the conversation that you had. Tom Rabbit was able to feature that. It was fun. I thought you did a good job, even though, you know, you were only able to speak, you know, a few fractions of a second at a time because, you know, Darth's got to give his community college lectures. So let me shrink this down all right same rules apply as with all my broadcast it doesn't sound like i'm it sounds like my audio is working but if the audio for the video stops working definitely start yelling at me in the live chat here we go folks yeah what's the origin of the, of the information in the genome yeah like genetic uh, drift um which is not a darwinian no 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 that is a related uh, aspect what is the origin of the uh, of the sequential um, information which is in the genome. What is the mechanism that produces the arrangement? Uh, the DNA polymerase and replicating the, the genome? No, no. What is, what is the fundamental mechanism that will produce the gargantuan information system in the double helix? Yeah, yeah you're, ask, you're asking what it's the DNA polymerase. Yeah, do you want? Do you want? That's what do you, no, you you're, no, you're not understanding. Do you understand evolution? Yeah, I. Uh, an unfair question. Um, if 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 you ask a question like, "Hey, where's this information coming from?" Now, first of all, I'm always a little suspicious. Anytime I hear somebody use the word information in the context of a discussion going on between believers and non-believers, you know, believers and skeptics. The first person to talk about information in a genome, I immediately clench up a little bit because while I am not an expert in evolution, I often worry that they're going to approach it with the kind of explanation that Stephen My Dr. Stephen Meyer gives when he talks about information in the genome or the genetics, and he equates it almost directly with computer programming, computer code, um, and just a phenomenally daffy um, misunderstanding or... Um, misrepresentation depending on how you're going to attribute what he's doing and what his motives might be to this and attempting to communicate it to lay people it's stupid um but Dar darth is already so this guy already mentioned one thing drift genetic drift um which is interesting because if darth understood his hero dr eugene coonan's research he would understand that eugene coonan actually i think in his book devotes quite a bit of time talking about the effect of genetic drift on evolution, this, this, this idea that you can have populations go a long period of time with almost no change, and then something interrupts it. Um, and really just the drift part is just that extended period of time, from what I understand. And factoring things like that in and, and horizontal transfer of genes and, and these other kinds of components in order to fully more fully flesh out an understanding of uh, natural selection and um, you know descent with, uh, with modification. Darth's not doing that here. He's automatically like, no, it's not drift. And he's like, oh, okay, well, is it is it this? Is it polymerase? No, it's not that. I wonder what Darth's looking for. Okay, okay. what is what is the mechanism that produces the information that will uh, produce the genome that produces the ph phenotype? That produce, excuse me, produces the I mean, it's gonna information. Be, it's it's going to be it's going to be dependent on your scenario. 
right? Like if, for example, like, um, no, there's no, know, there's, there, if, there's, there's, example, a, there's a clear <laughs> Neon's attempting to give an answer where he's going to flesh out some of the conditionals, right? There, there's a nuanced answer here to give. And in certain circumstances, this might account more, this might account more. Darth's like, nope, nope. There's only one right answer here that Darth wants. That's everything about his attitude and what he's talking about. It sounds like that's it. There's just a one word answer that I want from you, Neon, and you better give it to me. And direct oh, I, answer I from evolutionary exactly. websites. You're not giving the correct answer. Yeah, I'm trying to, but you're cutting me off. So in some no, mechanism... No, because you're filibustering. What is the mechanism right. that produces the information in the genome? So, I mean, we can talk about, like, replication of genes no we can also talk about copying information copying information is not is not producing the information what is the origin of the information the the dna is the information so you're not answering listen i'm not trying to jerk you around i know he actually is he's actually jerking him around you'll see why in a minute what i'm talking about well you're talking about you you are please mute this person proxy yeah mute him mute him Mute him. No, mute him. No, you mute you him. muted me. Mute him. You muted Foxy, me mute him. in your Foxy, fucking. Mute him. You muted me. Foxy, mute you muted Foxy, me mute this in your fucking. Are you here, chat. Foxy? Yeah. Okay, Foxy, are you mute? I'll just turn you down, and then I won't hear you. Okay, so you can you can go pound sand, uh, sir. Why does he keep telling people to go pound sand? He's, he seems to be obsessed with the pounding of sand. What is the mechanism that produces the the the? Sorry. Yeah, what is the mechanism that produces the information that results in the genome? So, okay, so there's there's a... So that sound meant he had Neon muted. So he muted Neon, um, or somebody muted Neon, but for whatever reason, the guy that came in there with the word flesh candy that Darth started immediately hollering at Fox, Fox he needed to get rid of. I'm trying to figure this out. Like, is, does Darth not have mute mute on here? Maybe he didn't have that. Maybe maybe he has to rely on Foxy to do that. And Foxy had him muted, and it took Foxy a second because he was stomping on Neon. He he didn't realize that Flesh Candy, who sounded like he was on the under the influence of something, he, he's 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 butting in. A few different ways I can answer this question. One of them would be like, for example, uh, natural selection. Natural yep. selection. No, no, no. Stop, stop. You don't know. You don't know what you're you know. talking about. Right. You don't stop. Right. But, but your, stop. your question is stop. so narrowly framed that you stop. seem to want stop. one answer, stop. and this is a multi-response question. Stop. Dan's absolutely right. It, there, there's more than one thing that's going on that's determining the quote-unquote information within the genome. And he's 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 mentioned one, which was natural selection, and he got into talking about ge genetic drift. And uh, genetic drift, I think, was the first one he offered. And now Darth is Darth is just free. No, no, stop, 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 stop. I can't get my the conversation can't get off off the ground until you follow the until you provide him the answer that he specifically needs. You know. Stop! You don't know what you're talking about. OK, you're just you're just repeating like a parrot what you what you've been taught. There's a very simple repeating like a parrot. OK, uh, Simon says, no, Darth can't mute in Fox's room. Oh, OK, good to know. So that's an interesting dynamic. I, I wonder how that uh, I wonder how that works. <laughs> it's like uh, cast kid, but Darth, um, oh, let me pull that back up. Evolution is not simple. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, I, but the answers to Darth's questions about evolution could be simple. The, the only thing that makes them complicated is trying to figure out how goofed up his understanding is of the concept in order to like you know give him the response that he seems to be gunning for. If you haven't figured it out, the response that Darth Dawkins is looking for, and I'm not saying this just because I've already watched past this point, but I was starting to get the feeling that this is what he was gunning for when I was first listening to it, is mutations. He just wants Neon to say, mutation is where the info comes from, even though that is one component of the process. These other things that Neon has mentioned are completely correct. Those also factor into what determines the, the you know, the, 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 the the modification, the change, the makeup, the the uh, stack or the collection of quote unquote information available in that. And Darth is just rejecting any of the other ones that are related to that because he has not heard the word mutation yet from Neon. Therefore, Neon is just wrong. 
This is an amazing performance from Darth so far. Simple answer that you can go to any major evolutionary site where they explain they explain the idea of the mechanism that produces the genome over 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 deep time. What is that mechanism? Yeah, so <laughs> There's this more. mutation is one of those I mean he's not wrong in, in in this particular portion of it at least I mean I think he's representing it very stupidly um, and he's and he's like dogmatic about it. it mutation is one of those things and it is an important one it's just Neon hasn't mentioned that one yet um, and Darth hasn't given him time to actually lay out an explanation where mutation the component that he's looking for in neon's answer would either be explicitly or implicitly stated he just cuts him off because he starts off with something that darth is like no you're already on the wrong track no he's not if darth understood what this concept what he was talking about he would not jump in and interrupt him just because he heard if he, he hears natural selection eh, you're wrong he hears genetic drift eh, you're wrong i can stop you right there because you don't know what i'm talking about you don't know what you're talking about. You can't possibly understand evolution to the degree that I do. He's already demonstrated at this point. He doesn't fucking know what he's doing. Because I'm, I, I am not somebody who understands biological sciences very well. My exposure to evolutionary theory is from my own reading and documentaries and et cetera. And from good people in social media who are very well versed in biological science have been able to explain where I've gone wrong with it or where I've had difficulties with the concepts of it. And I can tell right now that Darth is completely, he's just barking up, you know, he's not even barking up a wrong tree. He, he's hes staring up at the sky and barking and thinking a tree is there. Uh, JL says that uh, Darth has been going into created VCs starting by his sick fans because it's easier for him to ask for someone to be muted because he's on Discord via his phone. Hmm. So I guess he lost the desktop with his mom's house, huh? Interesting. Huh. So natural selection is the no. driving force of evolution. No, from you're not. Life. Stop. Stop. Natural selection is only preservative. It is not creative. Now, what That's is the true. mechanism? Listen carefully. That is completely untrue. Sunshine, you don't know what you're talking. If you run that into a search, you will get back a, a lot of confused things. Natural selection, it, it, saying that it's only preservative and not creative is a, a, just a, a massively dim-witted thing to say if you pretend that you are some kind of expert about it. In the sense, Darth doesn't think that he's just, he understands evolution. He believes he understands evolution so completely and so comprehensively that he can disabuse all these people who have been brainwashed by the evolutionists um, in, into all their false beliefs. Like, he can set the record straight. And he's getting lot, he's getting things like just categorically and definitionally wrong here. Like he's already like he set himself on the back foot, even yelling at Neon for, for just attempting to respond to his goofy question. What's the one thing that that, uh, you know, uh, determines the information in the genome? Well, there isn't just one thing that was a dumb way of putting it. But if you're looking for mutations, yeah, that is one of them. But it's not just that's not just that. And then, like, well, it can't be natural selection because natural selection just preserves what was already there. It doesn't create what's already there. Nope. 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 It's a lot more dynamic and a lot more complicated than that. This is part of Darth trying to oversimplify aspects of evolution. Well, over, you know, the, the, the actual, you know, physical reproductive aspect of, of evolution, the, the descent with modified, you know, characteristics part, just trying to simplify that. Oh, it's a very simple process. Well, then overcomplicating the fact like, you know, because if you ask them like, oh, okay, well, if it really is that simple, then I guess it could have happened in a few billion years. Well, you know, when life emerged here on earth. And then Darth all of a sudden, no, it couldn't possibly. Time's much more complicated than that. You don't understand how difficult it is to line all those dominoes up, blah, 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 blah. But what accounts for all the all the info in that Mut mut mutations? That's it. And the, the other thing too, I'm not even sure if this ding dong is arguing in good faith about this. Like he agrees that that's what the information is, or if he's just saying, "Hey, I've read your scientists, and they say that this is the only thing on there." Which actually, I think he's going to say here pretty quick. Talking about now, what is the mechanism? Okay, you can go to Berkeley.edu and there their site on evolution. It's a very simple answer. 
Okay, it's it's so simple that it, that a fifth grader can answer. What is the mechanism that produces the genome? I'm not talking about what Natural preserves it. No. If you go to that that Berkeley.edu section, if you look up that website, they do have some really good stuff in there. It's 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 basic evolution 101, evolution for dummies like like me, you know, people that. Uh, majored in you know the, the the histories the humanities social studies blah 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 it's uh it's there for you know hey didn't get a degree in real subject like physical sciences well here's how evolu evolution works you weirdo and it lays it out pretty good and when you get to that section i don't know um my guess is that darth probably went to the evo 101 thing because he, he probably was there spying for you know for the creationists and while he was lurking in there he's like aha i found it right here just says mutations does it um if he was looking at the same site that i was looking at it doesn't say that mutations comes up obviously because that is a factor for that but if you look at the website that's not the only thing going on oh and darth knows that and he'll reveal that here in just a bit Shit. No, I'm telling you, you don't know what you're talking you about. Dreaming? Natural okay? selection. Listen to me, I am okay. But you're not. You're repeating the same sure? thing again. Natural selection is. Why don't you just... Yeah, Darth is young Earth creationist. Tell me what you think the answer is. Listen carefully, okay? Natural is selection. God? Hold on, I got to switch my headset. My headset went out. Hold on. I don't understand what kind of piece of shit headset he's using that sounds worse than I mean, he's on his phone. I, I, I totally believe J.L. Warren. And I think he did say this in the other one, like, oh, you know, his sound quality improves when he's just talking on his phone. So I don't know if he's using I, my guess is the, the sound quality is probably low. Maybe he's got like a Bluetooth headset that he's connected with. So he can just set his phone down. That's probably safer because, you know, if he was holding on to it, he'd try to crush it, hurt his hand or he'd throw it across the room or spike it into the toilet and flush it or something like that Neo, man, uh, it'd probably be good if you like try to listen to what half. Darth's saying to you instead of just over talking him in the middle of his sentences He's... yeah neon was over neon was over talking darth you catch that from fox the 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 the, uh, the jurassic park lizard in the in the top hat is claiming that neon is over talking darth and not answering his question neon is answering his question Darth just doesn't, it's not computing with Darth because Darth's looking for one word and he just can't, he can't shift gears. And it, hey, that can happen. That can happen if you don't understand, you know, comprehensively what it is you're talking about. Okay. He, he just keeps on asking me the same question that I'm answering. Yeah, because you're not like, answering oh, it. No, natural no, selection. No, natural no, no, okay, no, no, natural, no. Mute, mute these people. If anyone is heckling, mute them. Okay. Now, I'm natural sorry. selection. Nat name, natural yeah, selection. Sorry. Natural selection is commensurate with the Darwinian theory or the neo-Darwinian synthesis. But natural selection is also uh, consistent and commensurate with intelligent design and creationism. Natural selection. Mm. No, it's not. But mostly because creation, like it, it would be. It might be consistent with certain kinds of in intelligent design ideas it doesn't really work particularly well for creationism be mostly because creationism unlike other id theories or hypotheses out there creationism is specifically invested in uh theological notions associated with god's creation of the world and specifically the special characteristics granted to humans Darth should know this because Darth understands the concept in Christianity called uh, the Imago Dei, you know, Latin for the image of God, right? Humans are created in the image of God. It's what gives us a special characteristic. One of the, one of the killer notions behind uh, evolution, right? The, the one that continues to surface to this day is when people are skeptical that they came from monkeys. That's what they're, they're, they're wording. Not mine. You trying to tell me we come from monkeys? Um, and if we came from monkeys, how come there's still monkeys around? You know, well, you didn't come from those apes. Those ones are your cousins. Um, they came from similar ancestors. Um, so you guys have some, you know, you guys have some relatives back in the past that you share. 
Um, but they don't like the idea of that, and Christians especially didn't like the entailment of that idea because it violates the imago dei, the concept of the image of God. At what point do humans become special? If everything descended from like one central, you know, kind of like one um, uh, life kind of source, uh, 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 kind of uh, one, uh, either one being or something like that, that, and everything else branches out from it, well, then you have to change what, what you mean by the image of God. If we're all related, I mean, and not just to animals, but also to plant life and everything else, well, then is just life the, was life the image of God? Were all living things created in the image of God? How are people similar? And as some people can get around this. They're old earth, uh, they, they might be old earth uh, types. They don't have a problem with evolution as far as it goes. They think that um, the image of God is more of a soul kind of thing or something like that imbued to us over time or whatever. Um, and then they end up getting into fights with young earth creationists. But this idea that Darth is talking about like, hey, you know what? Evolution, natural selection is something that works with creationism. Um not well it can but with a lot of caveats lots of caveats a lot of a lot of ones that darth probably wouldn't agree with right especially if the christian said they they genuinely believe that was the way it should work out like that's a good explanation by the way uh hello to maya and uh skeptic and scoundrels good to see you both here <laughs> anytime a theist asks you if you're related to a strawberry you say yes <laughs> I like this one from Christopher Mowdy. If we came from dust, why is there still dust? Yeah, all that dust is just going to waste. All that dust should have been turned into people by now. I mean, what's God doing? Only talks about the survival of the fittest. Now, what produces the ar no. arrival of the fittest in terms of the genome? Okay, what is the mechanism that produces the information that is the genome. I'm not asking what is the mechanism that preserves it. What is the mechanism that creates the information that constitutes the double helix? Okay, so in that, so that question is, uh, I guess you could answer it with like mitosis, right? Because when you have cells that replicate, no, they take the original no, DNA no, no, and then they no. replicate. Oh, no, stop, oh stop. Again, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just giving me general answers in answer biology. Okay, do you? you... No, he's actually trying to get into an explanation to like teach Darth how this works. That Darth's just, Darth doesn't understand where he's going to go with the cellular mitosis thing. Because he's looking for one word. He's looking for mutation. Since he's not hearing it, Neon must be wrong. You see, no, you, you know, I'll, I'll be glad to answer, answer the momentarily, question? but I just want to show you don't know what you're talking about. And the answer is so simple. Okay, even a child is who God? studies evolution. Now, no, I'm, I'm talking well, what about is the it? theory of it. Well, okay, stop, listen, stop ranting and answer the fucking listen, question. Listen, though. listen, if you're rude to me again. He's being rude? <laughs> I mean, I, I warned you, I warned all viewers about this one. This, this is just a performance. He is just twirling in his, in, in the towel he has tied around his neck as a cape. I'm surprised. He probably caught it on fire on a candle or something somewhere. Uh, assuming he's in a place that allows him, you know, access to like, you know, an open flame. You're going to be server muted. Do you understand? No, no, no. I, I don't give a shit. Okay. If you're going to okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. You're done. Okay, I asked you over and over again, what is the mechanism that is detailed at evolutionary websites as to what produces the genome, not what preserves it, preserves it in a step-by-step -step fashion? That's natural selection. Natural selection deals with the survival of the fittest, not the arrival of the fittest. And you don't even know the answer. And I'm going to give you another chance. You can unmute him. But if he acts that again, server mute his... his uh, dumb Al. Okay. Now, what is the mech? You've had plenty of time to Google this. What is the mechanism that produces the genome, which will then survive in a step by step fashion? What is the mechanism that produces the you, information? You mean, you, you mean stepwise, but that's fine. Uh, I, I suppose you mean mutation then? Oh, he, he finally stumbled upon duty. it. He <laughs> finally stumbles upon it. You see how easy that was? easy you call that easy now 
do you believe that random mutations are what incrementally built the genome of the animal kingdom? Uh, sometimes, but sometimes not. Sometimes it's genetic drift. Sometimes no, 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 no. He's absolutely right. This, no, 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 this is peripheral. It's, it's, Sir, it's, it's, you're not, you're not getting this. Nature. Listen, I know all this stuff, okay? <laughs> this is peripheral stuff, okay? Why is it peripheral? He's not going to explain why. In order to have a universal common ancestry. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, Christopher Maudi noticed Nephilim was up there. Yep, yeah, he's in there too. But notice he's not getting, he's not able to get a word in edgewise. I think he just has his mic on. So when Darth gets real loud, um, it comes over his mic. Okay, where you start from the least complex forms of life to go through the tree of life to all the higher forms of life, <laughs> you need a, you need a, step-by-step -step increase in genetic information now granted i understand about the nature of mm, that is not right that's wrong um mostly because that's kind of a clumsy way of putting it. my understanding is that information's there what's happening is that there's different things that are happening different pressures are being placed in that living thing and different things are being expressed he seems to think that like new information has to like it's like a software update that comes from Yahweh, and he plugs it in, and all of a sudden, you know, there's a lem you know, hey now you know, now we've got a new kind of lemur. This one's got a stripe down its back, you know. Like I, I don't. I this is just in incredible, incredible stuff. Genetic drift, speciation, and things like that. Now, do you believe? Do you believe that? Um, if I told you that in a massive universe that the likelihood of mutations being able to build the genome of the animal kingdom, why would you believe it when it is vanishingly small? What's your oh, reaction I, I know to this. that? I know, I know this talking point because uh, the implication that you're making when you say uh, when you say those huge numbers with shock value is that because for one, evolution doesn't have any target; it's just selecting for you're, you know. Like, you're not you're not responding to my question. You're he absolutely is responding to your question, Ding Dong. I don't I don't understand why 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 Ding Dong can't get this. Well, no, I do understand. He's an asshole. I am trying responding. to respond to your question. No, it's, it's you're a not. Longer, it's no, a longer no. than one sentence question. No, 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 no. I need no, more than no. one you, sentence You're not to as smart. As the only appropriate answer to Darth when he asks, asks these questions is, is just to respond with, you're an idiot. And your questions are making everyone that can hear you talking more stupid. Stop talking. I, I, I really don't understand why just more abuse. Is, I mean, I think more people would like to see it. More just verbal abuse hurled at this guy. He definitely deserves it. But he's always in a situation where he can either mute people or he can go into one of these rooms where he's got that that uh, dingus with the uh, the avatar, the T-Rex with the top hat um, that'll, you know, kind of white knight form, a simp form, and shut people down if they start getting a little too sassy. Um, and what I think is interesting is that this neon guy doesn't seem like he's that difficult to talk with. But, I mean, Darth has said uh, the word stop so many times that if, uh, if somebody were naive enough to try to play a drinking game with that, they, they, they already would have died on their way to the hospital. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's dangerous. This is dangerous. Um, and, you know, Darth's... Darth's inability to just allow somebody an opportunity to, I mean, just for himself, if this neon guy really is not getting it, what's the harm in letting him talk? If anything, if he really doesn't understand what he's saying, giving him more rope to hang himself with would just give Darth more to do. But Darth is constantly cutting the person off. This is why Darth will then get, you know, accused of shutting people down because he knows that this person is on the right track, but Darth needs to accuse them of being wrong right out the gate over some small niggling thing. Like he didn't get the he didn't get the the mutation word out. You know, just this nitpicky kind of thing. Uh, therefore, I can accuse you of being wrong right away. I'm not gonna let you. I'm not gonna let you take two three minutes to give an explanation. That's gonna sound you super smart because then everybody's gonna realize that your brain bigger than Darth's brain. Darth's brain no good. You know, it can't have, it can't lose the audience that way. So the best way to do that is just keep hammering on these guys 
um, for for anything that you think doesn't work. But everything that doesn't work for Darth is just whatever doesn't line up with the precise orientation of what he needs coming at him. It's 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 a it's a stunningly uh, kind of antisocial way of interacting. It's f- fascinating to to study to see a Darth in the wild, so to speak. As you think you are, you're not oh, as boy. smart as you think you are. Now I ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, I, I need one not, more hey, sentence. If, if you overtalk me, Darth, you're going to get. I need another sentence. Last you're warning. Over-talking. Last warning. You're not addressing my question. You're talking past it. You're just I, you're I'm just repeating pre memorized stuff. Now, I said to you, the likelihood oh of mutations building the genome is. Have you ever heard the phrase "vanishingly small"? Do you have any idea how small that is? Yeah, but you're it, doing the math wrong, though. That's do you problem. believe? Hold on a second. Right. Hold on a second. I'm going to ask you Most a question. Okay? Are not listen, 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 listen to me. This is why I despise talking with young males on Discord because they're impulsive and they're ignorant, like you are. You're the one now, who can't stop talking. Wait, listen, dude. listen, listen. <laughs> the neons made a good, great point there. Listen to me. That's because I know what I'm talking about, and you do not. You clearly don't. Now, because you can't listen carefully. Listen. A great point, and one that needs to be made more often. Nicola writes: the likelihood of building the genome is one out of one. Literally, nothing preventing them observed facts occurring without the appeal to a space wizard. Yes. Agreed. Listen, sure. You're just bickering with me. You are just continuing to bicker with to me, like the little teenage talking. male that you are. Okay, now that's because I know what I'm talking about. If you continue to bicker with me, you're going to be out of the conversation. I'm getting to a point. You talking? Okay, sir, listen to me. Listen to me. Cross talk me one. Cross talk me one. I don't know who the, the other person's mic is coming in there, and now it actually sounds like Darth is physically fighting Neon. It's it's a great addition. One more time. Do it this one more time and you can, you can Okay, operate. server mute him. Server mute him. He's done. He's out. Okay. See? I just pointed out to him that the random mutations in a massive universe, the likelihood of this happening is vanishingly small. Nope, because it happened. Okay. To say something is vanishingly small. It is it is the it is the greatest improbability that anybody could even hope to conceive of. So he believes the mutations built the entire genome. He didn't say that mutations that only mutations built the entire genome. Darth wanted him to say that. Okay, over fourteen billion years. Over fourteen billion life life only started what three and a half billion years ago. Why is he talking about the beginning of the universe? He's talking about like the Big Bang, the beginning of the observable universe. Life didn't start when the observable universe began. In a big universe, in spite of the fact that it would be vanishingly small to occur. Wow. But he objected to it being vanishingly small. Did ever? Yeah. So. Everybody hear him object to that? Right? Can I have some confirmation here? Did he? It's a rare moment when Darth is looking for, like, I mean, direct, like, I need direct feedback. I, I, need, I, need, I need to be consoled here. Did he not object when I said that random mutations building the genome was vanishingly small? Yes, he basically did. Did he not tell me that I didn't understand evolution? No, he said your math was wrong. I think what he meant to imply was that you you didn't really understand what you were representing in terms of like the math and the stats and the probability, the odds, etc. And and it's obvious that not only does Dawkins not understand evolution, I think that's easy to believe now because he doesn't understand the conversation he just had. Because now he's saying now that he's kicked Neon's been removed from the room. Sorry, Darth couldn't kick him. He had to have one of his uh, simps do it. Um, now that he's now that he's talking about him while he's not there, the idea is to tell him like, hey, this guy thinks that mutations are responsible for everything. Darth spent the first, I've been covering this for about 10 minutes, he spent like the first five or six minutes, I think seven minutes, of their conversation harassing Neon in an attempt to corral him into giving him that one word answer, as opposed to any of the other things that Neon presented, which are also part of determining what's in the genome. Neon wasn't, wasn't incorrect with those. But 
Darth needed him to say mutations so that now Darth can turn around after he's had him, now that he's had him removed, say, well, this guy's just trying to say that it's all mutations. Was that what Neon tried to say, Darth? I, I, what were you guys bickering about for seven minutes beforehand? He, he, Neon even managed to get the words out that that's not all there is to it. And Darth just, you know, was hollering about something else at that point. Can right. I have some yeah, feedback? Yeah, sure. Okay, right. now, hold on a second. Hold on. Now, did he not object to my characterization that random mutations building the genome was vanishingly small? Did he not object to that? Okay. I mean, I thought someone else was going to go, but yeah, I, I definitely heard him. Um, oh, you, you heard that. that. Did anybody else hear him object telling me I didn't understand it when I quantified mutations building the entire genome as vanishingly small? He objected and said I didn't understand. Okay. Now, let's get him back on my microphone. He did, but okay. eventually, what he did was he eventually. No, uh, I want to. I want to ask him a simple question. Why is Darth interrupting? Fun? Oh, because he's an asshole. Sorry, asking a dumb question. Question. Okay. Now, unmute his microphone. Now, Mister e Evolution Expert, is evolution happening by random mutations over fourteen billion years? No. Fourteen over fourteen billion years. So life started as soon as the observable universe began. Okay, in a grand universe, is the that is likelihood. Yeah. Okay, okay, listen to me carefully. Stop over talking me. Stop being I an impulsive little teenager. Okay, listen to me. You see, you get unmuted and you still can't control your mouth. You see, I, I don't take it. I don't take nonsense for teenage little boys on the internet because I'm three times your age. Uh -huh. Ooh, 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 Papa, don't take no mess. Sure you do. All you do is hang out. Like, if you don't want to hang out with obnoxious young males, you would not spend time on Discord. This is just a... I mean, is 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 Darth at Discord because he's lost? He got lost one day, and he just started talking to people, and now it's like, oh, okay, there's activity happening around this internet park bench, so I'll just stay here, feed the ducks, you know. Now, now I'm going to ask you again. Do you accept or do you reject that random mutations is what built the genome over 14 billion years and that the likelihood of that occurring is vanishingly small? Do you accept or reject that? I accept. I, I, I would need you to quantify more specifically what you When I say vanishing, vanishingly, okay. Hold, hold on, vanishingly hold on. Let me small ask your question. Is, Stop being impulsive. Uh, Okay. All right. You know what? You know what? Him. 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 You're done. Your you are question. done. You're done. You're you're done. <laughs> no. Cakes are done, Darth. People are through. Okay. You see, they the, can't even show respect for somebody who's old enough to be their father or grandfather. So you've said, but Darth's lied about his age. So why would anyone respect him? He says he's old enough to be their father or grandfather, but he's been saying he's like sixty. Like he just started saying he was sixty-two. I think he was 60 or 61. Like I've heard about this guy for like 10 years, eight, nine years on the internet. Like, and he's, he's, he claims he's been on here for 10 plus. And I'm pretty sure that if you go back to some of the earliest like surfacings of him, um, he was saying that he was old enough to be everybody's grandfather slash father then. So um, Darth's just always been, and he says it in a way that's like, I, because I could be your dad or your granddad, I am better than you. Which I find kind of odd because I don't think Darth had a good relationship with his dad. Like, he doesn't sound like the kind of guy that did. They have to be. They got to pretend like they're little assholes talking with other teenagers at the cafeteria table because they think they're so damn smart. Okay, I see. This this is him telling on himself a little bit. He knows Neon's smarter than him, and he know and he knows that Neon knows more about this subject than he does because Neon wasn't being snotty. But Neon was able to start giving answers that Darth couldn't follow and didn't couldn't understand. So Darth needed to step on that super quick and exert an allu it's this illusion of control that he needs to get the one answer out of him. That, and, and because he's not doing it, Darth thinks that he's pwned him, right? He's got, I've got you ding dong right where you want. I, you, 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 you sniveling little clown bastard, you lying little bastard clown you. Um, you didn't say mutations, therefore you lose everything. Like, okay. Like, he's a moron.
But don't worry, he's old enough to be your grandfather, so he's a venerable moron. I asked him a simple question, okay? He knows damn well what I mean by vanishingly small. small. I qualified it, that it's so astronomically improbable and remote that in order to even conceive of it, we have to say it's vanishingly small. Okay, it's at the point of... That doesn't matter. Like, the fact that life has occurred once that we've been able to observe, yeah, that makes it kind of, you know, that makes it a super rarity. But th this idea that, like, the way that he's he's approaching this kind of thing is just tortured. Um, this, this is kind of the classic, you know, creationist, the young earth creationist kind of mindset that they've got to, they've got to run at this. Uh, yeah. And I, I agree with my hero. I mean, that's true. He is of that generation, but he's only in his sixties, allegedly, uh, you know, according to him. He, and for somebody who's been online this off uh, this much, the fact that he's still insisting that, that young people um, who, you know, he's, he's talking to at least what, two, three generations, Two or three different generations on here. Let's see, boomers. No, yeah, three plus including way, and he's a boomer, so probably three total. Uh, with maybe a fourth one coming online soon. Um, if, if if you are nude, I don't know what the generation is under under the Zoomers, but kids, if you're coming online, keep an eye out for Darth Dawkins. and so yeah, be careful what you say to him. Um, and he doesn't seem to understand like this dynamic has shifted. Not only are they not inclined to really just, they're just going to offer up respect just because you're older, but when you're only interacting with people in an online space and they only have your word for it, well, they're definitely going to be skeptical and they're not going to just offer you respect just because you say that you're older than everybody else. They have no way to confirm that. And they've, you know, they have instincts about online culture and online social relations that Darth just doesn't have. So even though he's been doing this He's been terminally online for the better part of a decade. Almost a vanishing. That's how small the chance is, okay? Now, I asked him if he accepted it or rejected it. Well, because I'm giving him a true dichotomy, he doesn't want to answer it. Because What's he talking about? A true dichotomy? Is, is Darth blurring two of his favorite things together, the pre-sub and the the... <laughs> The defense of young earth creationism. The tr what true dichotomy? He's afraid what's coming. So he goes, oh, I need you to qualify what is meant by vanishingly small. I already qualified it. Okay? Now, we'll try it one more time and see if this, this little punk can control his mouth. You can unmute him. If he acts up again, mute him and don't take him off mute. I'm asking you a question. Is random mutations being the source of building the genome in addition to natural selection? Boom. Caught him lying. Right there. Is, is the genome, I'm asking you a question. Is random mutations being the source of building the genome in addition to natural selection? Is, is the likelihood of it vanishingly Catch that? I'm going to play it one more time. Small source of building the. I'm asking you a question. Is random mutations being the source of building the genome in addition to natural selection? In addition to natural selection. So, what was the point of all the temper tantrum stuff that was happening at the beginning of this conversation? It's random mutation in addition to natural selection. That was the second or third thing I think Nian answered with. And Darth screamed stop at him more times when that was proffered than the previous two, which I think the first one was he mentioned genetic drift and started to go on to explain more and got cut off. And then I think he offered something about uh, DNA polymerase or something like that and then got cut off. And then he natural selection and then got cut off. And Darth's like, no, 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 no. It's so simple a child can understand it. A kid can understand this. Go to berkeley.edu and their Evo for Dummies thing. Uh, you can get it from there. If you go there, it mentions genetic drift, natural selection, random mutation, et cetera, et cetera. It, recommend, it, re it represents the components of this whole thing, this process. And now he's actually admitted, okay, along with, in addition to natural selection, random mutation accounts for this. He just told people before, one of the, I don't know, the third or fourth time he, he muted him, 
that Neon was on here trying to say that mutations are the only thing that account for it. And that's not what Neon said. And now he's now he's con now he's conceding in a way. So either he, uh, either his level of understanding is much much worse than we than we previous than you could previously think up to this point, or he was lying from the beginning because he wasn't getting what he wanted. This this whole thing was just an, a, a drama exercise for him. Is is the likelihood of it vanishingly small? Meaning it's so it, the improbability is so small. It's about nearly vanishing. Do you accept or reject that? Am I good? Hello? Do you accept or reject that? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I accept that for any one base pair, the odds No, no, are, no, uh, no. no that's not what we're talking about. Stop. Stop. I'm trying to Stop. 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 You I'm can't control your stuff. Stop. This is more of Darth trying to control the answer that comes out of the person he's talking to. This is completely, it's pointless talking to a guy that does this. I applaud Neon for actually persisting as long as he did. Because, I mean, some of this has been condensed a little bit, I think. I don't know. I think there was some spliced moments. So. Stop. You can't control yourself, can you? We're talking about the entire genome of the entire yeah, animal so, kingdom. So Do you accept that it is so improbable it's at the point of where it's almost vanishingly vanishingly small in terms of disappearing do you accept that no, no i wouldn't accept that and this is why okay now okay now stop 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 i don't need you i don't need you to explain why all i wanted you to was to confirm what you said before you just confirmed that you reject the notion that yeah, random yeah, mutations right. okay now okay listen i'll be glad to let you speak but do not cross talk me at what point are you going to be happy to let him speak because i don't think he's finished a sentence yet I, I think the only ones he's been able to finish are simple questions uh <laughs> jail beware because your adversary the darth roams the highways like a toothless lion seeking who he may scream at and server mute i think it'd be interesting to do a, a horror movie about somebody this obnoxious you know and that's this really all he does you know it doesn't really ramp up from there he just he just although you can kind of see this in like a movie like i don't know i would think it'd be like there will be blood kind of thing you know he starts out really you know but at some point it's going to get dangerous you need some kind of dramatic ending but or maybe you don't. It just ends with him, you know, kicked out, you know, living in a shelter, screaming into a, like a, a, you know, a really basic Android phone at a 12 year old kid that called him grandpa in a snotty way, you know, like Roblox or something like that. That's, that's where it ends. Um, so it was just, just for context, punk, was, punk music was a thing when Didi was young. Yeah. Now, you just made yourself very clear that random mutations aided by natural selection and other processes, that random mutations in terms of its statistical improbability, I stated that it, it's so improbable that the only way to really express it is that it's vanishingly small, and you rejected that, right? Yes, he, I think he did. Well, yeah, guess yes, what? Yeah, guess what? Why. Guess hey, you don't have to tell me You're why. Saying, I, when are you going to allow you, me to speak, listen, li, li, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I laid a trap for you, and you didn't see it coming. Would you like but to know let what me the trap is? Why. It's no, no, you part. don't. No, you don't need to explain why because I'm going to show you something. Because you're, you're not afraid interested of, in the discussion. Okay. That's no, why. you see, you, you see, you you yes. are you are. He's so excited grotesquely immature you cannot control your mouth you will not you will not even listen to possibly learn now i laid a trap for you okay and you didn't know that the trap was coming you didn't know that the trap was coming i mean if if uh, i think i remember what this one is but i'm going to read this one from uh, pat Darth is the kind of geriatric asshole that would demand his students to refer to him as Professor Dawkins, not only in class, but in every social context, even after they graduate and exceed him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or at least equal him, right? Like, they're two professors, but like, yeah, you know what? You're still younger than me. You will call me Dr. Dawkins. Um, 
I, but at the same time, Darth seems a little bit lowbrow enough. Like if he'd gotten even like, like he'd be the kind of guy that would re- want people to refer to him as Doctor F- and then his first name. You know, like kind of like a th- those kind of chiropractors that sell like colloidal silver in buckets or whatever. You know, not you know the big bucket. You know, yeah, that kind of shit. Um, in addition to natural selection, the likelihood of increasing genetic information is a hundred percent. Yeah. Michael Dean says, what a stupid question. Also, Darth got his shit backwards there. Yeah, he's been doing that a little bit uh, more lately on multiple topics. But he's, he's so now he's telling Neon, he's set a trap for him, which now at 17 minutes in, isn't that the thing that you want to hear from somebody you've been having a conversation? Well, barely having a conversation. Neon would not describe this as a conversation. Neon is being chewed out by Darth. Everybody gets chewed out by Darth if you're in a conversation. If you're not kissing his ass, you're getting chewed out. Uh, so let's hear what Darth has to say about the the trap he set. Now, you rejected that random mutations over 14 billion years producing the genome along with additional processes, which I'm not disputing. I stated that it's so astronomically remote. The only way to quantify it humanly would be vanishingly small. And you. That's not the only way that you, you wouldn't quantify it with an. Hmm. You said that's wrong. Okay. Now. I didn't come up with this idea. Do you know who did Uh oh. say that it's vanishingly small? Who said it's vanishingly small, folks? If you can guess, um, you know, get yourself a Coke. Um. <laughs> Dear God, is D.D. Jordan Peterson without the antipsychotics? I think that's a good guess. I think it's a good call. So, yeah, this is the trap that he set. And, and, and why is it a trap? Because of who we, the name he's about to invoke here. Who is he going to call? Who is he going to say? Like, who's his authority? If it starts with the first letter, if the first name starts with the, the letter E, you're on the right track. Congratulations, Mr. Blumkin. <laughs> you oh, would you like to know who said that? I, I don't care. I'm explaining. I, you okay. Oh, oh so it doesn't. So, so, so if one of the world's greatest experts on evolution and microbiology, who is a renowned scholar, oh who my God, his scholarly cool. citations, who his scholarly citations are so off the chart, few people have as many scholarly citations of his work. Okay. Now, here's the bombshell for you. Who oh, your great embarrassment, bad. Dr. Eugene Coonan. Oh, is God. one of the few. Oh, so you don't want to hear it, do you? That wasn't Neon talking. That was somebody named Sonder. W.L. Sonder. Dar- well, you know, if Darth's doing all this stuff through a phone, he probably can't see who's talking at him. Okay. See, I laid a trap for you, and you fell for it. Okay? Dr. Eugene Coonan is one of the world's great experts on evolution and microbiology. Okay? And he has a book out where he defends the theory of evolution, okay? His his expertise just doesn't lie in microbiology. It lies in microbiology and how it relates to evolution. Dr. Eugene Coonan, you can look him up, okay? I believe his last name is spelled K-O-O-N-I-N, Dr. Eugene Coonan. Dr. Eugene Coonan has a, a book on evolution called The Logic of Chance. Okay, so much of it is technical; it's very difficult to understand unless you have expertise in microbiology. But there's a lot that non-experts can understand. In the at the end of his book, he states more than once that evolution happening by random mutations at all in a one-off large universe is vanishingly small. Now, uh, okay. But he also acknowledges that it happened. Also, um, if you have the if you have the ability to get Dr. Eugene Coonan's book, uh, "The Logic of Chance," which is what he's der- deriving this from, um, I did a little bit of a word search. So, because this book is so, and Coonan is so often um, cited by uh, these kind of yuck goofballs in an attempt to blatantly misrepresent his research, because. Part of what happened, and Coonan got a little bit of pushback on this, just to go back. Coonan is one of these guys that has a real gripe with the modern synthesis, which is just the sort of consensus explanation from, from 
you know, physical scientists on how they explain natural selection or, you know, or, you know, life, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, developing all these kinds of things to lay people. And there's lots and lots of research that's happened since then where the modern synthesis is not entirely accurate. And because it's not really accurate, it's, it's far from being comprehensive, but some of the inaccuracies are starting to lend themselves to real problems. People running with, uh, running away with ideas like natural selection being some kind of like a selecting force, almost like an intelligence, a sensor kind of thing. Um, these kinds of things will start to crop up in, in kind of common science or folk science understandings of it. And when science try to like fight this off, people will be like, well, what natural selection? And they have to like, yeah, natural selection doesn't entirely work the way you think it does. Um, with the new research that's in there, he's trying to go for, Conan is trying to go for something more like a postmodern synthesis, something that is updated uh, with a new understanding. Uh, some of it is a little bit counterintuitive that takes into account more of these factors like genetic drift and, and um, horizontal gene transference, these kinds of things. If you read his book, though, his book is widely available now, and it's also free to download. I'm not going to show how, but um, you can actually find it with a Google search. You can find a site that has it in its full PDF version. And I think the site's actually hosted probably by like an apologist, a Christian. So it's been circulating so far, you know, and uh, this doesn't surprise me at all that they're not buying it. They're just you know, making copies and spreading it around so everybody can, you know, cherry pick different snippets of it and say, hey, one of your boys said evolution hard. Therefore, my claim that evolution can't be real has been bolstered. It's like that doesn't follow at all. And that's not entirely what Kunin said, because if you get a PDF version of that book and you look for the words vanishingly small, most of the most of that most of the time that I saw that I think he uses the phrase in his book six or seven times. I'm pretty sure that he's talking about the odds of, I think he's talking about cosmological evolution and like multi-world models. I wasn't able to find some comment where he said what Darth is saying, that random mutations, uh, you know, life having these random mutations in a one-off world um, are vanishingly small. Couldn't find it in the book. So... Maybe Darth is blending a few things together. Maybe he did. Maybe Kunin does say something very close to that, but didn't happen to use the word vanishingly in front of small at that point. But the one thing I do know is that Kunin has gone on record, being interviewed many times by people, that yes, the reason that he's actually taking kind of a harsh, critical tone about some of the stuff involving uh, modern synthesis stuff is to sort of shake science, you know, consensus science up to shift to a different synthesis, a different way of explaining it. That has been gobbled up by young earth creationists and used as a way, and they've twisted that into saying, aha, we have scientists out there who are, they, they, they're evolutionists, quote unquote, but they have issues with evolution. No, they don't. They have issues with the modern synthesis not evolution. And Darth keeps conflating the two things. Eugene Kunin believes in evolution. Darth knows that he does. Darth has said that he does. But Darth will continue to represent Kunin's quotes as if this is somehow undermining evolution. Kunin's research and his books, all of his writings, are meant to undermine or at least point out the deficiencies of the modern synthesis explanation of evolution, not evolution writ large. He's trying to refine it and change it and incorporate more of the new research and more of the new paradigmatic thinking into that. That's it. Darth is abusing this, misrepresenting it, and he's lying to people in the name of young earth creationism and Jesus. He's a fraud and hypocrite, and this is the kind of behavior that makes people not trust the religiously motivated when they get into topics involving physical sciences especially when they need to get into these topics because they feel they need to defend their religion from the implications that those real scientific theories might have on their personal favorite uh, entailments about those things, rather than just sort of reflecting on maybe your religion isn't right about everything. No, 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 that can't be it. Not only is Darth's religion right about everything, but because it's Darth's religion, by extension, Darth is right about everything. Now, can you tell me, me why can you, okay, how do you know that? 
Yeah, because this is probably talking. He absolutely, Neon's right here. He's actually right here. He is quote mining because the quotes that I saw, he's not talking about mutation. He's talking about cosmological, cosmological evolution, I believe is what is being discussed in almost any of those statements. And I don't know what he means by the end of the book because the end of the book, there's, there's an, a massive bibliography. So it's like, is that like the summary chapter of it? Guess what I couldn't find in the last chapter of Eugene Kunin's book? Because yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll skip to the end to see if I can find this quote. Couldn't find it. Talking about uh, Vanish Link Small in the context no, of no, other No, 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 no. Would on, you but, like me to tell on, you but, why? Hold on, no, but, no. Hold on, are you accusing me? Are you accusing me? Are you Everything I said agreed with you so are far. You accusing you me, let me talk are you sometime. accusing me? You no, you're, 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 you're not a liar. going to get server muted. Nope. You're going to get server muted. Okay? If you don't want to be server muted, you need to stop being rambunctious. Now, you accuse I don't know what the difference is between being server muted and regular muted when he get, keeps getting brought back in. If Darth had him server muted, I guess he could change his mind five minutes later after ranting about him and just be like, okay, uh, undo the server mute, bring him back in here, let's chew him out some more. Excuse me of quote mining. Now, do you know, in fact, that I quote mined, or is that an ad hoc rescue? Well, no, I don't know in fact, I don't know... In fact, okay, stop right there. Stop right there. No, 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 no. Stop. The Pat mentions the first edition of the book was printed nearly 20 years ago. The statistical model that Darth repeats ad nauseum is entitled "A Back of the Napkin Calculation." Yeah, yeah. And Coonan went on record in in an interview. I can't remember where I found it before. I wasn't able to find it before I went uh, live with this one. But people had asked him, like, hey, you know, there have been, like, uh, creationists and intelligent design advocates that have been throwing your name around and your, and citing your book as a way of some, kind of shoring up some of their, their, argu their own arguments. And he's like, yeah, they're, they're, they're not understanding the research. They're misguided, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he, he, he's taken flack from some people in his own disciplines that have been like, you know, look, dude, we understand that you're tired of the modern synthesis and you really want to shake things up. But the attitude that you approach this with, there's a bunch of ding dongs out there that think that you're gunning for the theory of evolution in its entirety, not the modern. So there, if you go and talk to people about this and ask, though, that most most younger creationists do not know what the modern synthesis is. I am I'm very convinced that Darth Dawkins doesn't understand what it is. Other than uh, now, I have seen some young, young Earth creations talk about it, and when they do, they talk about it as if it's a uh, conspiracy. The modern synthesis was this: all the scientists in the world got together, or you know, all became pen pals with each other and wrote letters to each other, discussing how they were going to dupe all of the all the other dumb you know dum dums in society into believing what they wanted believed about evolution, and they just made up a bunch of the stuff, and that's what the quote unquote theory of evolution is. And so they'll then turn around and use evolution, theory of evolution, evolutionists, evolutionism, Darwinism, and modern synthesis interchangeably, just to make an even bigger mess out of this thing. Um, and then pretend that they're agents of light and rationality in this debate, even though they just showed up and defecated all over everything. Last, last warning, stop or you're getting server muted and you won't go back on again. Did you catch that little squawk in his voice there? He sounded a little bit like a chicken. Stop. Or any, in fact, okay, stop right there. Stop right there. No, 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 no. Stop. Last warning. Stop or you're getting server muted and you won't go back on again. No, stop. Last warning. Stop or you're getting server muted and you won't go back on again. That's a hell of a squawk. You, 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 you slandered me. You slandered me and said I was quote mining. I said, do you? That's not really a slander. You know that I did that. Now you know. You are guessing that I quote mind, aren't you? It's a damn good guess, too. I went looking for the quote. I can't find it. I don't know where Darth's getting it. Shoot. Yeah, because you usually okay. you disagree with evolution. Then, 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 you are you a know what? You know what? Then guess what? Then then guess, evolution. guess what? Okay, listen. I'm warning you. This is the last time I'm going to say it. I shouldn't I say it again. You should be muted. Okay, you know what? Goodbye. Mute him. You're done. You're not going back on. Okay? This dumbass, when I cited one of... We're 21 minutes into uh, this video. Um, it's one hour and nine minutes long. And he said he's muted and he's not coming back. That is not true. <laughs> the world's greatest experts in microbiology and evolution, who is a staunch defender of evolution 
states that mutations at all, meaning other mechanisms, but mutations being in the forefront, building the genome, aided by natural selection over 14 billion years, okay, he says it's vanishingly small. Then this little turd for a brain slanders me and says I'm quote mining. When I asked him, does he know that I quote mining? He said it was just a guess. So in other words, his accusation that it's a quote mine is an ad hoc rescue. He doesn't know that I'm quote mining. Mm, it's not necessarily an ad hoc rescue because he's not really using this to get himself out of an issue. I mean, at most of this has been Darth just, um, just you know, opening up the valve and just dribble, you know, just spraying neon with all this like young Earth creationist, you know, cope. And neon's been able to been like, no, well, yep, uh, no, well, uh, then, uh, no, uh, no, you know, because anything past that, Darth is interrupting him, trying to stomp all over anything that you know will sound like a reasonable response. And now he's like, well, now oh, 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 you slandered me. I really don't understand. This is one of the things I don't get. If you open up with a comment like this, like, oh, that sounds like you're quote mining right there. He's quick to jump on the whole, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, you accuse me of doing something wrong? Yeah. Now, notice that Darth doesn't care why Neon did it. Neon could be like, well, here's the thing. Based on what I know about Eugene Coonan and his writings, and his research, and where he's coming from, what you're talking about doesn't follow. So I have a feeling that you're quote mining. Which what's a, what's a quote mine? You're you're taking a quote from a person, hopefully within the field of study that you're trying to talk about, and then trying to spin that quote as a way of to to sound like the source is saying something other than what they meant. And the, the weird thing about this is that I've never heard Darth explain past this point. Like, Eugene Coonan acknowledges that evolution is a fact. He acknowledges that there's issues with the modern synthesis. If he did make this quote, this doesn't mean that he's stated that he doesn't believe in evolution. He stated that it's, let's say that, let's take Darth at his word and say that this quote is completely attributable to Eugene Coonan. He said that the chances are vanishingly small. Okay, that's not the same as saying that they didn't happen, and it's not the same as Eugene Coonan saying that it, it's impossible for it to have happened that way. So Darth has gotten nowhere with this, on top of the fact that he's quote mining. Right? But he's accusing me of quote mining when he doesn't know that I'm quote mining. Do you see what a little deceptive little boy he is? Now, to prove to you, that I'm not quote mining, you can find his book floating around on the internet. You download his book and oh. then type into the PDF reader into the search bar, type in vanishingly small. Or I did this. And now I did not, full disclosure, I did not make it to this point in the video, I don't think. Or maybe I started skipping, you know, scanning through it. I did exactly this. And I think there's six or seven mentions in there of Vanishingly Small. And I'm pretty sure all of those mentions um, are talking about cosmological evolution. Um, a, co a concept and a field I don't think Darth would want to get into. Uh, I have tried to get like, you know, sort of summaries of it, you know, kind of, you know, explain this like you would to a hyperactive toddler kind of explanation, you know, something that'll work for me for that or topics similar to that multiverse stuff things of that nature it's hard this is not intuitive stuff and i'm pretty sure that's the section of the book that i'm pretty sure that's the stuff that kind of conan is getting into at that point um not intuitive not easy uh the fact that dawkins is, is actually recommending this exact process that i use to try to find quote unquote vanishingly small within the book makes me wonder if that's what he was doing that's how he read the book because i guarantee you he didn't read it cover to cover uh jl writes after this little session neon and i researched it and confirmed the intuition that darth darth was quote mining yeah 
yeah, like I said, I, I looked into it too. And like I said, I, you know, and maybe, maybe my search wasn't coming up right. Maybe I wasn't finding the one. I did not find a quote that said it, that, that from him that was worded the way Darth is presenting it. So. Hey, Doubting Thomas. Uh, uh, Jefferson, do you know what vanishing a small means? I think it means that Darth Darth has a small dick. I'm going to go with that. Or just type in vanishingly. It will come up several times in the back of the book, right? Or at or near near the end of the book, okay? You can see for yourself that I'm not quote mining. And the proof that you're a dumbass and that you decided to falsely accuse me right? So that you could save face is Dr. Eugene Poonin says, in spite of it being that vanishingly small, in a many worlds in one hypothesis, which is a megaverse, then, then in spite of it being vanishingly small, the many worlds in one would guarantee that at least one universe out of a gazillion universes it would accidentally happen. The point is this, this little punk who thinks he's educated in evolution, he's educated about the crap that he's fed him where he can regurgitate it. Notice Darth Dawkins is never regurgitating crap he's memorized. Even though I've read at least one book and well, I've read one entire book that he uses as a source for some of his apologetics, a 1982 book, 82, 84, something like that. All thoughts captive, all every mind kept, something like that. Uh, it's it's basically the Christian equivalent of like, we have to make everybody uh, a faithful zombie. Um, and it's cringe. It's horrible. It's the kind of apologetics from the early 80s. And it, Darth it directly relies on it. He, he recommended it to Tangelo. Tangelo passed a PDF copy onto me. It's shit. Um, I think I did a video reviewing that one, and that's kind of what got Darth's attention. Um, but Darth also, you know, gets into like the precept stuff, more of the bonds and shit. So the fact that people have caught him and recorded him and have played the recordings of Bonson saying something in a seminar or lecture or debate, and then Darth saying the exact same thing. No, Darth's never just regurgitating what he's heard or read. But you see, he thinks that when I said that it was vanishingly small, it was bunk. But then when I quoted one of the world's foremost experts on microbiology and evolution, who says it's vanishingly small within a one-off universe. Mm -hmm. And in order to evade that disastrous... I don't remember saying that in the book. ...situation, he appeals to a bazillion universes to circumvent this problem. Mm, that's not all he's doing. I like that. This is how Darth has taken this into because there's there's a um, a multi world model out there. Darth has summarized that as a coping mechanism for biology for, for microbiologists to say, well, if you've got billions of possible worlds in a multi multi world a multiverse, um, then the odds of one happening accidentally are inevitable. Is that is that what Kunin's saying? I don't understand that part of his book well enough to, to be able to say that. Um, I'm counting on Darth being reckless enough in his uh, zeal for apologetics to commit to something that stupid. But you see, this little punk accuses me of quote mining, right? And then when I ask him, do you know I'm quote mining? And he goes, no, he's guessing. Suppose I guess and I and I and I say, oh, well, 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 well you know what, uh, you know, you, you, you know, you, I, I'd say I'll, I'll guess that you're. I love, it. I love it when he starts talking like this because he sounds like, you know, Rick or Morty. I'll guess that you're a bank robber. You know, I'm, I'm just guessing that you're a what, uh, you know, you, you, you know, you, I, I'd say I'll, I'll guess that you're a. I'll guess. Oh, a PDF. Oh, well, that's very charitable of you, Darth. You're just going to assume that somebody... See, the thing is, uh, you did something that made Neon suspect that you were quote mining. One, he knows the person, probably knows of the person that you're talking about. Two, um, 
by hearing, like while you were talking about him, he could have just Googled him real quick, seen some of his writings. And then when you start making connections about well, Dr. Kuhn and sales, uh, and then you can be like, yeah, that sounds like a quote of mine. That's not a tough intuition to, I mean, well, I, what's wrong with that? But Darth here is like, well, how would that be? And I could have just turned around and accused him of being some kind of abuser. What grounds would you have had to do that? Did you hear something in the background, Darth? Did Neon maybe confess something or or say, you know, did he did he tell a story that was maybe a little weird, a little off-putting? No, you just decided that. Oh, I want to I want to accuse this person of being some kind of abuser. That sounds like something Darth would do. But then try to say like, well, this is the same thing as you accusing me of being a, a, a quote miner. It's not. Neon had grounds to do that. So you're a bank robber. You know, I'm I'm just guessing, right? If we, if we, if we're justified in in hurling accusations and they're just guesses, right? No, the reason why he immediately went to a knee-jerk reaction that I was quote mining is because he didn't want to face the embarrassment of contradicting one of the world's greatest experts on microbiology and evolution. Oops. Yeah. Um what what was that was that's his trap, right? That's that was the trap that he that he set. Okay. So you, you engaged in a conversation with somebody. So it's terrible that Neon uh, may have, quote, accused Darth Dawkins of, quote, mining. But Darth Dawkins has admitted that for the whole beginning of the conversation leading up to about this point, so about the first 20 minutes or so of the conversation, was to lay a trap for the person he was talking to, was to trick him. Um. That sounds abusive, Darth. So would it be wrong for me, having seen that behavior, watched you gleefully admit your behavior and your motives, and then celebrate yourself for having achieved this trick, spring the trap, catch this person, by quote mine, even though you didn't, you know, for most outside observers look at this and be like, well, this just seems like a complete, you know, flop. Uh, and then sit around and pat and then and then talk, pat yourself on the back about how clever you are, like as if that you know you guys this conversation sprang out of some place and and you set it up like a game of chess that you'd already won. I, I don't know. That sounds a lot like prideful boasting, and I don't know that that stuff is evidence of the Holy Spirit, Darth. What's the name of the young skull full of mush who accused me of coal mining? Well, Did anybody catch something. his name? Neon something, I think. It's it was Neon. neon. Yeah, Neon. Okay. Yeah. I think it was Globe Champion. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So neon don't you love it? I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I, don't I, I don't. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but in this case, I'll club the horse. Okay. The fact of the matter is, he accused me of quote mining, not because he knew that I did but because he was trying to invoke an ad hoc rescue to save his embarrassment that he contradicted one of the foremost authorities on microbiology and evolution. No, he didn't. <laughs> Who the, what the hell kind of laugh was that, Baked Alaska? Oh, uh, Baked probably in the sense that, yeah. Now, hey, Neon Globe, go download a copy of Dr. Eugene Coonan's book. Okay, so after, he now he's admitted that he's had a false con he had a conversation with this neon guy under false pretenses. He set a trap for him. He manipulated the conversation uh, in order to spring said trap. Um, so you know he's he's you know basically admitted to being verbally you know essentially manipulative, um, and now he's telling him to go find an illegally copied co co an illegal copy of the book. Because if you find it online as a PDF, like the one that I found, somebody had it like laying out on a, on a, on a web page. I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be there. Like I said, you can, I think anytime I've seen this kind of stuff happen, I've seen this with a couple of other sources, quote unquote, as well, where there'll be a textbook or something like this, that especially the apologists, if they're either defending, you know, young earth creationism, they got to get these things out there. They end up putting these copies out there and they circulate in a free form 
so that they can grab them and use them as a resource. I don't even know why they bother doing this. Most of them are just going to quote from each other, um, but it's out there. So, you know, like I said, if you Google it, you will probably, within a matter of minutes, you'll probably find a PDF version of it. You probably shouldn't. Go get it from your library or maybe buy the damn book, Darth. But now he's telling him, hey, Neon, go out and get one of those purloined PDF copies of it. And then um, go through, do a word search and 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 find what I, uh, I, uh, 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 yeah, pulled out of it. Like it didn't take me long to look at those quotes and then just kind of look at the statements around them and then kind of zoom out and look at the chapters and be like, yeah, I'm pretty sure Darth's getting the context of these statements completely wrong. So it's not controversial. Darth was quote mining Eugene Coonan. Book in a PDF reader. Look up where he says vanishingly. A PDF reader, a browser. Small. He says it several times. And you come back here, Mr. Smarty Pants, and you show me how I quote minded him. Quote, quote, minded him? Quote, quote, minded him? Why is he talking like a child? You're six, you're old enough to be my granddad. Yeah, come go show it to me, bud. I look bud? forward to that. But you, you know what? You, you claim that you're in pursuit of science and knowledge and truth. Did he? I don't think he got those words out. But because you want to preserve your little mythical story of evolution. Mythical. Right? And I bring a devastating line of reasoning that you were not even aware of. How do you know he wasn't aware of? Like he clearly was aware of something because he suspected you were quote mining. That even one of the greatest exponents of evolution acknowledges. And then you decide to slime me. When I no, every time Darth drops that little turd on everybody when he's when he's given a recap of his own kick-ass performance, of course, he never actually says, "Okay, so this is the first time I think I've actually ever heard him go into it." It was before, but like, okay, well, this guy says that it can't happen that way. Coonan says it can't. No, he didn't. He didn't say that. If Dark Don, I'll say this again. If Darth Dawkins is correct, what Coonan said is that it's really unlikely that it did. That's what vanishingly small means. It does not mean impossible. I don't know why Darth is saying. I mean, well, I do know why he's doing it, but I'm really surprised that he's like like and any of his flying monkeys are letting him get away with this. Vanishingly small does not equal it's impossible. It, somebody needs to tell him that. Because even if that is what he's saying, that doesn't do it. It could have happened. And if you don't want to appeal to somebody like that, and I think in the case of you're talking about a multi-worlds model, well, then that's making an argument where the evolution, the emergence of life, abiogenesis, isn't a chance. It's an inevitability, which is an implication that I think Darth doesn't want to deal with at all, definitely does not want to deal with that. Quote, one of the world's foremost experts on this, and the only way for you to get it, you're quote mining. You, you quote mine. Wow. Um, can you unmute Neon? I want to ask him a quick question. I thought he wasn't supposed to come back. Dip. What a fucking dipshit. I told you. I told you. He'd be back. So he should keep his mouth shut if he wants to be safe from embarrassment. But let's let's give it a try. Neon, are you there? Uh, yeah, I, I'm yeah, here. okay, okay, real, 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 real simple. I don't, uh, need that guy sounds that neon guy sounds like a real asshole. I mean, listen to him, just just chafing at the bit, ready to run. I mean, I would have come back into this. I'm like, shut your <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well lecture, just a simple question Do you believe that God is ultimate? Oh, cool. All right, going from failed apologetic for younger creationism straight into. What's the ultimate foundation for your, you know, your epistemology? No, I don't even know what that means. Okay, okay. can okay, ultimate means that which is unconditionally <laughs> non-dependent, from which all other things derive and depend. Sounds incoherent, because it is. So I take it. Okay, so the answer is, in your view, God is not ultimate. Is that correct? Well, I don't. I don't believe that God can be anything because I don't. I don't know that. No, God no, no. Is okay, no, no, no. You know, I told you I don't need a mini lecture here. All I need is no. I don't. That was it. That was the only sentence. Okay, I now, needed. now, okay, now. Can you tell me what is ultimate? I I wouldn't have any way of knowing what is ultimate. 
Did you everybody hear I don't that? And to know that, like you. Yeah, that's a good answer. How would you know it? Did yeah. ev did every did everybody hear that? Yeah, I, I don't pretend I, to know. Okay, guess what? what, guess what? Please know. don't please don't cross talk me, or you will be server muted again. <laughs> server muted. So he was server muted. Okay. Because up until then, it just sounded like he was being muted, and then he was kind of in the background. He's like, it'll be server muted. Like, that was going to somehow be more, that's extra muted, and with no possibility of return. That's that's never the case. Um, I, I like this from uh, Nicola. Do you believe God is ultimate? No, I don't think gayness depends on God. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I did every button. did it, I said please don't cross talk me while I'm talking because I'm not done yet. Okay. Now, did everybody hear what he just said? Yeah. Okay. Now, could somebody else One repeat back to me, just so it's clear to everybody in the room, what he just said? When I asked him, "What is it ultimate?" What did he say? He said he'd have no way of knowing. He said, "I don't." Did everybody know. hear that? Yeah, okay, did everybody hear that? Me. Okay, yeah, right. Okay, excellent. Guess what? I laid another trap for him because he didn't see it coming. I'm going to read to you notes that I wrote on him from the past. Let me. Oh, oh, oh he's got a journal. Pull it up. Pull it up or pull it out, Darth? Um, Neon, do you recall having a conversation with me February 5th, 2022? Over a year ago? <laughs> <laughs> this is serious. Yeah, no, no, no. Do you remember when I? Do you remember? Do you remember? Year and a half ago? This is sad. Uh, I did not hear this part before, um, but this would explain why Darth needed to uh, yell at Neon a lot at the beginning of this conversation. So, for whatever reason, there's a history here. And, um, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see where this goes. This is uh, the thirst that Darth is demonstrating here. Right, right. Okay, good. So you don't remember. That's okay. I remember because I took notes. Because I take well, you notes don't on people that's, that why I you took, that's why you're referencing the notes, but that's fine. That's right. That's right. I'm refreshing your memory. Now, hey, guess what, smirky boy? You're about to be royally embarrassed when I tell... No, no. Um, not after what you just did, Dawkins. No. Hey, you know what? You and I had a conversation before. Do you remember February twenty sixth, twenty twenty two? You don't. Do you remember the last time you denied an ultimate reality to me? Do you? I took notes. Yeah, I had it dictated. Cheryl dictated it for me. That was back when I lived in a basement in a real house. Uh, stunningly weird. Tell everybody in the room what I wrote down. I asked you in February fifth in twenty twenty two what was ultimate. Do you recall what was the f first thing out of your mouth? He should have said WrestleMania. Let's hope that it was WrestleMania is ultimate. Uh, did you define ultimate in the same way? Yes, I did. Do you remember no, I, what you I, said I, to I, me? I don't remember what I said in a random conversation uh, of February oh, okay. of last and, year. And, 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 and what did you say to me now that you have no idea what could be ultimate? Remember that? Did you just say that? Yeah, no, well, by, if by ultimate you mean non-causal, then yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Okay, he says he, he has no way of knowing that. Now, in February 5th, 2022, he directly stated to me that what was ultimate were laws of nature. Wow. wow. But, you see, today, but you see, today he's saying, I have no idea. How could I know? But in... Right, because in more than a year, there's no way that Neon talked about this topic, that conversation with other people, maybe did a little bit of reading on it, maybe discussed some metaphysics with some philosophers who kind of like dabble in that or specialize in that. So there's no way, uh, there's no reason to expect that he would have either changed his opinions or modified them in any way, right? Since that happened February of 2022, and it's now October of 2023. We're almost two, you know, we're, we're coming up close to being uh, two years away uh, to, from that conversation. Neon's opinion on that would not have evolved at all. 
Oh wait, sorry. I used that. That's the trick. I used the word evolved. That's why Dawkins can't. Yeah, yeah. He can't. He can't possibly accept that. Oh, Gary. February fifth of twenty twenty two. You told me it was laws of nature. Does that ring a bell? No, I don't. That, know. That's what well, I wrote it down when you said it. Because right, and we should totally trust the guy who laid a trap as part of a conversational gimmick. The whole point of him having a conversation was to trap Neon. So, yeah, um, g given the overwhelming amount of credibility that he's built up here, we should completely accept the fact that um, he took accurate notes about what Neon's answers were more, what, a year and a half ago? More than a year and a half ago. Oh, Darth. Because I knew that when you shoot out, showed up on some later date, if I wrote it down, then I would remember what you said. But guess what? It gets better. Okay? Okay, why, though? Plenty of people have answered that question that way. Why would he write down Neon's response? And why would he have kept it for nearly two years? I mean, I know supposedly he actually does keep a list of trolls. This is weird that he's got a date. February 5th. Somebody told me this ultimate. I wonder if that's maybe the only thing he keeps track of. If I ask you this question and you and the person responds with an alternative to anything, you know, an alternative to Yahweh, I record that in my little books just in case they, you know, they go back on their word. On June 13th, 30th, 2014, on Google Plus and the GDC Hangout, you told me that God wasn't real and I was a boomer. I have it right here in my note file. I'll keep it on Apple Cloud so I can cross reference it. Yeah, this is just really, really weird. But yeah, this is good. Dee Dee is like that crazy girlfriend. You remember what you told me on January 3rd, 2019? And like, no, I don't remember our conversation. And I'm totally going to believe, I'm completely confident that you didn't take what I had to say out of context or misrepresent it in any way, given in this conversation, you were super stoked about the fact that you trapped me. Yeah. I mean, this is what I would put out there for Neon. But then I'd be accused of being a snarky little teenage boy. Darth's favorite. You change your tune throughout the interaction, and that you abandon. Is this, is this really the best you can do? Okay, is mute, mute, this, you don't mute, this, mute, 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 mute him, mute him, mute him. Uh, a, a lot of us are, yeah. Uh, but I, <laughs> but Nicola, you, yeah, you're on that list for for maybe more reasons than I am. Like I'm a troll. But there's some there's some social identifiers that that keep you on that list because legitimately i think darth is terrified of you and he should be a except for the elements that he finds you know that he disapproves of because that's just his creepy ass you know prejudice and ignorance but mute him thank you okay he's throwing out the roadblocks yeah he's like now, stop no really stop honestly, talking about yeah it. yeah so what, what, up what the fuck is parakeet talking about there he's throwing out the roadblocks he's He's legitimately asking, him, like, what are you doing? This is pathetic. And it is. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm exposing la, this arrogant. This arrogant. Can we mute the hecklers, please? You see, they hate, they hate that the Christians are winning. But I'm not done yet. The name okay. Off. okay. And they're winning. Uh, this here's the thing: nobody's winning in a conversation, or even even what I'm doing, this sort of post post mortem of a conversation. Uh, we all lose when it comes to Darth Dawkins. Um, the thing is, is that Darth Dawkins, I think, is the ultimate loser, and by and by that I mean he is the grounding for all loserism, all loss, and every every other form of loss is contingent upon the the loser that he is. If that makes sense. Um, I would pay money to be there at a post-mortem release of Darth's infamous notes. Wouldn't that be interesting? Like they, they're going through his effects after afterward and they're looking through things and they're like, Oh my God, he kept a notebook with the names of, I th like, what are these random words? Neon, spatchcock, uh, bridge the divide. Uh, who's this Nicola guy from back? I'm like, you know, like why on earth? And they, like dates and like things circled around and the, then he's got this picture of like knives with blood dripping off them, you know, pointed at the person's username. Like, who does this? Yeah. 
yeah, I would imagine that that would be interesting. But even let's say, let's say it's not even that colorful. It's just like you find that piece of information. Like, yeah, this guy spent like many years online, and and he kept lists of people online whom he disagreed with. And he and he the notes were so that if he ran into them again, he could he could get them. I think everybody at that point is going to realize what a sad, broken, wasted life that is. And this is coming from somebody like me, who reviews Dart's content for for entertainment value and to edify critical thinking. <laughs> Even I wonder, like, man, is my channel going to be looked at with any kind of response, you know, like any kind of respect at all? My thinking is maybe a little bit, but that's only because I'm ribbing this guy. But holy shit, if I do... Now I know if I keep a journal with names written in it and like, oh, I, I remember talking to that guy back in 2023. Oh boy. And now it's 2025 and he's back on again. I remember that voice. I'm going to get this son of me. Like, yeah, it's time to hang it up. It's, it's time to, you know, get a flip phone, you know. Oof. Okay. Well, just just. So look on your screen on the, the the list of names and see whose name lights up. Okay, I'm now, doing that. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. So so today so today, Mister Braggadocia, Mister Big Big Man on Campus, who got owned, uh, contradicting Doctor Eugene Coonan, then he said today he doesn't he has. Uh, you didn't really demonstrate how he con that he that he actually did um, contradict Eugene Coonan. Uh, all it did was raise a lot of questions about whether or not you really understand the quote that you were trying to use there. I mean, every, everybody has put a pin in that. Like anytime that you use Kunin as a way to sort of like massage this point, like, okay, well, he, he, he said mutations don't do it. Like, no, if you're right, then he said it's vanishingly small. I don't, I don't understand. And, and the only thing that Neon had mentioned before that was like, yeah, I don't think you're getting the math right there. So even if it was a contradiction, it wasn't a direct one. And here's the thing. People, other scientists might completely disagree with him. Um, yeah, agree, Nicola. That's probably what he's got written down because he's an asshole. No possible way of knowing what is ultimate, but in February of 2022, he categorically stated that it was laws of nature. He was emphatic about it, so much so that I wrote it down in his account. Then, when I began asking him questions, he realized that he that this would not work because of the question I was a asking him. Then he abandoned his bold assertion that laws of nature were ultimate. And then, you know what he then said after that? He said that quantum energy what is what ultimate isn't that amazing uh, how yeah, he went from like, laws of know, nature then to quantum like energy common, and today he has no idea what could be ultimate it seems like the common thread between those things would be uh, like, sounds like he's a cause and effect relationship yeah it seems like a cause and effect relationship would be like the common thread between those things so for example like you know all atoms are made up of elementary particles, which you know don't seem to be make up, made up of any further constituent parts and are therefore non-composite. Um, so, I mean, it's ultimate in the sense that like there's nothing that that causes the result of those elementary particles neon, to be neon, anything other than neon, themselves. Neon, 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 neon. Oh, in that sense, it's ultimate. You, but I mean, neon. No, 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 neon. You're bullshitting right now, and everybody in the room knows you're bullshitting because you're trying to save face. You just told me right now, and I had somebody repeat it back. I said, "What is ultimate?" And you said, "There's no way of knowing." But in February of 2022, you knew yeah, it was laws of nature. nature but yeah. then, but then, but then. Ah, but did he know it exhaustively, Darth? Did he know it really conclusively? I mean, this is Darth has run into this problem before with people um, he, demanding demanding an answer to a question. They, they don't believe that God is ultimate, so he wants to know what is ultimate in their worldview, and they're like, "Well, I don't know that I have anything, right?" And then I'll just insist, "Well, you do." Um, it's you know, if he's a good precept, and he's supposed to say, "You do." It's God, my God, but he doesn't ever do that because he's a 
dipshit and a moron. He doesn't understand his own precept. Um, but um, asking for an alternative um, would just, you know, encourage somebody in the course of a conversation to try to venture a guess. And then when they, they venture a guess and he's like, well, that's not possible. And then he turns around and accuses them like, you said you did know it was ultimate. You said it was this or this or this. They were trying to give you an answer because they were venturing a guess because you wouldn't accept the fact that they didn't know. Darth didn't actually take the opportunity at that point to be like, no, the reason that you don't know is because there's something going on with your heart that's preventing you from realizing that what is ultimate is actually all the same thing. And it's the Christ God of the Christian Bible. And it's Jesus Christ who, you know, died for your sins and was resurrected and defeated death. And through him, you can have everlasting life. See, I'm better at this than Darth. All you got to say. Set him up with a little bit of uncertainty. Well, would, wouldn't you wonder what, what's ultimate? Or what if I told you you do know what's ultimate? It's just buried down deep and all the crap and evil of the world is keeping you from really recognizing what it is. Well, I know what it is, and you know what it is somewhere down there. You just you just haven't taken the red pill yet or the blue pill. I, at this point, I don't know if that metaphor matters to any, about anything anymore. But. And Well, I'm going to repeat it. In order okay. to sweep grand away grand your 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 bullshit, it's not grandstanding. I'm trying to humiliate you. I'm trying. Everything about this conversation has been Darth attempting to grandstand. I mean, it started like 20 minutes in when he was like, I set a trap for you and you fell into my trap. I have you right where I want you. You have been conquered, sir. I'm trying to humiliate you so yeah, your pride goes down. Know, okay, you, 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 you see? You see, this is what humiliating people to remove their pride. That how how does that work, Darth? Like, has that ever worked for you? Because it sounds like when people try to humiliate you, you um, build up an enormous amount of resentment for them and then avoid them or verbally attack them. So it doesn't sound like um, get humi seeking to humiliate people to reduce their pride um, is not a tactic that anyone should attempt to use. Because, I mean, you can, uh, that's just a weird, uh, do, do, do Christians really think that this is a beneficial, I think they do. Holy shit, what a bunch of, god damn, they, that, that, those cults need to go away. Or they, you know, the people that are coming into them, they need a new generation of people. You know, if, if this is your daddy's, you know, your granddaddy's Christianity, well, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to have a long conversation. I'm going to trick you until you say something stupid. Now that I know you're a stupid son of a bitch, don't you feel stupid? Don't you look at you, you dumb son of a bitch. Now it won't make you feel better. Saying you're sorry to Jesus, that'll make you feel better. Like, what the fuck? I, what kind of psychopath thinks that this is like a two step process to anything beneficial? Like, this is how you create like a resentful thrill killer at some point. Fuck, Darth, you are dumb. What you little teenage assholes do, okay? Okay, so you're trying to humiliate them, but then you resort to having to insult them. It sounds like the humiliation gambit's not working. Okay, you will not take correction. You see, then you said laws of nature, but then when I started to question you on it, you realized that this wouldn't work upon the question. So then you, then you went, oh, uh, uh, quantum energy, right? So how did you go from certitude that quantum energy was ultimate to now you say there's no way that you could know? How could you know then that quantum energy was ultimate, but now there's no way for you to know? Can you? In almost two years, I wonder how Neon's uh, opinion on the subject could change. Can anyone explain how in the world that is possible, how a person's opinion could have slightly altered? in 18 19 months i don't get the mechanism i mean it sounds like neon's pretending he's like from space what he's talking about is just impossible explain that uh because i i don't know that um elementary particles are in fact non-causal but i do know that they make up basically everything no you're not answering you're not answering my sense. question no, you're talking sense, past my question. You're filibustering sense. now. You're not. Yeah, you're not answering my to, question. To, you're not I mean, answering. It. Than, that's why I I'm interjecting. Than... Was there even still a, a question on the table? I thought Darth was just talking about how, like, I'm here to humiliate you to like humble you, and and then at that point you'll do what? You'll you'll not talk to Darth anymore, and then by extension, accept Jesus. Answer your no, 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 no. Stop, stop. Listen, Wait, I wasn't born yesterday. Here? No, no, Wait, you are, you are not answering my question. Listen carefully. 
you are filibustering right now. You are not addressing my question, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. I, I, okay, I no, no, say. you're not. No, listen to me. Listen to me. I'm 60. 60- oh, yeah. So he's trying to address that. How does, you know, how did he change anything? How did he change his opinion? Darth doesn't seem to really want to know why. Two years old, I'm not a fifth grader that you can bamboozle by filibustering. You are yeah, not addressing my question. Listen to me carefully. Do you have any self-control at all as a young man? A devastating lack of self-awareness when asking that question. Or are you just an, an impulsive yeah. 15-year-old? Y- yes, I, I have self-control. I just need more. Good, than then, then demonstrate it. The guy that has not raised his voice and really not changed the tone of his voice much at all in the course of this exchange after being muted and threatened with permanent, uh, you know, server mutes multiple times, is still attempting to engage this loudmouth 62-year-old. And the 62-year-old thinks that the, this guy is the one that is out of control. Then demonstrate yep. it. That's, that's now, I need. now, so now I'm going, go I, listen, yeah, I'm just going to keep on talking until you shut up. Now, you stated today there would there's no way that you could possibly know this so if there's no way that you could possibly know it then how did you know it in february 5th of 2022 that oh my god darth darth just holy shit darth this is um uh this is no longer a conversation this is now abuse because he's not even attempting to think through this. And there's no attempt being given here at like at something like even close to charity. If he had any sense of humanity, then he'd be like, oh, well, it's possible that after a year and a half or more, this person's thoughts and, uh, you know, have changed on this issue. Um, lucky guy. Didi seems like the guy who was rejected from both the military and police force because not even those institutions would accept an obvious psycho. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I I kind of wonder if maybe that that's in his past a little bit. Like, there's some things that, you know, he he wanted to be in a position of authority, but even in those those institutions, they're like, mm, not you. Old crow proverb: A man who claims his God laid rules for the world and then breaks those rules to teach them to others does not believe in those rules because he knows his God doesn't exist. Quantum energy was ultimate. How did you know that? Well, ultimate is like the furthest bat thing that you can get before, you know, you can't really find a cause anymore. No, that's and not what I we were talking about. Hold on, hold no, on, but hold no, on. no, hold on. stop can I, can I get, lying can I get longer? You're going to get sentence? server muted. Please? You're going to get server muted. You're going to. What difference does that? What, I don't know why he's threatening this guy with that. He keeps bringing him back. Threatening to server mute him means nothing. It just means that he's going to mute him and then talk more. To get server muted because now you're lying. That's not what we were discussing in February 5th uh, of, of 2022. You- well, maybe don't obsess about that, Darth, because when you asked him about that question, about the conversation, he said he can't really recall much of the conversation you had back then. So trying to get him on like, aha, you said this then, but now you're lying. Well, he doesn't remember the conversation, so maybe let that go. We're not talking about... What physicists think is bottom basic to the world of physicality. I thought he That's said not he didn't we remember that about. conversation. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Isn't that interesting? That's right. Now we. Yeah, Parakeet is actually right here, but throwing this out as if it's like some kind of implication here. Like, what the what? Like, if he's trying to say, like, look, if I gave that answer, I was probably giving that answer based on ultimate being like, what's the farthest back we can imagine? Now, Parakeet's like, aha, now you have admit you, you do remember the conversation. Yeah, I bet he remembers every word, Parakeet. Give yourself a gold star because you won't get one from Darth Dawkins. He remembers, but he didn't remember the conversation. Now, listen carefully. I didn't ask you what was the bottom substrate of the world of physicality. I didn't ask you that in February 5th of 2022. You sure? I ask you what is ultimate that dictates everything okay not what was the bottom substrate of physicality so darth remembers this conversation perfectly but he's forgotten like people that he's spoken to like sometimes within a month 
uh, he'll claim that he's never said certain things, that they've never come out of his mouth. And people will play him a recording of him saying that thing verbatim and then claim that he doesn't remember saying that or maybe I misspoke or yeah, whatever. But he's con but we're supposed to believe that he remembers this conversation from over a year and a half ago with complete accuracy. And given that he's admitted that he's trapped this guy at the beginning of this conversation, used one trap to, quote, humiliate him, that he's in some way not untrustworthy about this. And this guy represents Jesus Christ. Okay. And you, you were first emphatic that it was laws of nature. But then when I began to ask you, are some laws of nature? emergent from other laws of nature and then oops the light went on your head going wow i just shot myself in the foot so then you did a hail mary pass hail mary pass by asserting quantum energy was ultimate energy. You, is he on the toilet or something why does it sound like he's like you know dismounting a horse or something weren't saying i wrote it down in my notes so i wouldn't would, wouldn't forget you weren't saying that quantum energy is what is the bottom substrate of physicality the question his notes are sounding less like notes and more like a full-on transcript. It was, what is it that's ultimate that dictates everything? Okay? And you said quantum energy. But today... You know what? I'm kind of wondering. Maybe Neon... Maybe this... Because it's, it's been a while. Maybe Tom Rabbit had a video with Neon in it. Or somebody else did from a while back. Because if Darth knows this conversation as well as he's talking about it, I don't think it's so much an issue of what, having taken notes. I think maybe he's actually got a copy of the video from some some source, and he's like pulling up the transcript. You say, not only do you not know, there's no way of knowing. But you knew in February fifth of twenty twenty two what was ultimate. How did you how did you go from knowing with certitude that quantum energy not only was ultimate, it falsified God? What does this have to do with anything? But I'm now gonna, you I'm have no way of quantum knowing. energy is. You hungry, buddy? I want to know what this quantum energy is. This is this right, is now, way wrong. Now, if he's now, appealing now, to quote you know, quantum energy, he's wrong. Okay, well, well, hold on a second. See, this is the problem when we when we Christians dialogue and debate young males, even older anyone males, but more specifically young males on Discord, is. They not only have a penchant for, for lying and saying things that they know they can't support, okay? They and do it with abandonment. Which okay. never okay. say things they can't support. Uh, 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 okay, and, and who, who's challenging me? Yeah, I'm challenging you. You're a young Earth... Jesus, he doesn't even recognize Neon's voice at this point? They've been talking... Oh, my God. Creationist, oh, you can't oh, support the nurse oh, of the young Earth. Oh. It's the same. Ne me, neon. neon. Oh, it's neon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I can't. I can't. How do you know I can't? Notice he does not take correction at all. Like it's not not a problem that he didn't know who he was talking to. I don't think it matters. Because the Earth is obviously older than six thousand years. We have trees oh, that are okay. older than Noah's flood. Oh, 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 okay. Stop right there. Stop right there. What do you guess? What do you think is coming next? I have not gotten to this point, so I, I, I have no idea. What's, what's going to follow? But I'm willing to bet 20 bucks that radiocarbon dating is, he's going to tee that up for debunking. How do you know trees are older than Noah's flood? And by the way, yeah. do you remember how I, okay, hold on a second. Do you okay, remember I how I, okay, question. listen, I will in a second. Okay. Do you remember, it's okay, do you remember one? Okay, listen, do you want to be <laughs> permanently server muted? I've already asked. He's not being unfair, the neon guy. He's not being unfair. Accusing Darth of grandstanding clearly isn't easy. One, it's a completely accurate thing to accuse him of. And two, it seems to really get under his skin. Ask for you to be unmuted several times. I mean, if you don't, if you don't stop well, being a little shithead. Question. I'm trying to answer. If you, like, okay, you okay listen, last chance. If you don't stop being a little shithead, you're going to be muted from here on out. So okay. Mad. I'm not mad. I'm being assertive because I'm old enough to be your grandfather. I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm your okay, goodbye. Mute him. He's done. He's done. He's done. No, he's not. Again, we're we're only we still got twenty minutes. Thirty minutes. Okay. Left. This is the this is this is the problem. The problem isn't that they're brainwashed in this crap. Okay, because it's so prevalent. The problem is 
they are so afflicted with pride, they're unwilling to have a civil interaction. Again, the lack of self-awareness on display here is truly stunning. Okay. This is the problem, the pride. Now, he completely agree, Darth. Wink, completely agree. He said that the Earth is obviously older. Okay. Right? So, watch this. Unmute him. Tell me how you know how old the Earth is. How do you know how old the Earth is? I can't wait for this. And remember, I'm setting another trap for you. Tell me. That trap is, we can't trust radiocarbon dating because it was designed by Satan. So what I said specifically was that we know that the Earth is older than 6,000 years because we have trees that are, one, we have trees that are okay. older than Noah's flood, so that doesn't okay. really matter. Okay, let's have a conversation here. Let's and have two, a conversation and, here. Yeah, You're yeah, not we, going we to, hold to. on a second, hold on a second. We're going to have a conversation here. You're not going to give me a community college lecture. You're going to show some respect for me, and we're going to have a conversation. Well, yeah, you wouldn't want two community college lectures going on at the same time. That would be discordant. Conversation here, okay? Now. Yeah, yeah, how do you, like how do you know? Okay, sir, listen to me. You're going to get server muted again. Now, I, I, I'm well aware. Explain to me, explain to me, instead of giving me lectures, explain to me, right. how do you know? And remember, I'm telling you in advance that I'm setting a trap for you. Tell me how you know how old the trees are older than 6,000 years. Go ahead, tell me. Uh, because we have tree rings that we can study in the inside mm -hmm, of trees. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, I wonder. Okay, I didn't count on this. Uh, thank you, JL. Uh, I wasn't even attempting a Jeff Goldblum impression, but you know, I think all Jeffs kind of sound alike. Um, but maybe I should work on a Jeff Goldblum impression. I don't know. I once tried doing a Scottish impression or a German impression on here, and then nobody knew what I was doing. So, um, yeah, this. Um, I didn't, I didn't count on this one, the tree rings one, so I would have lost that bet. Although maybe not. I think eventually they might get to radio, radio uh, carbon dating, but um, he, uh, I think that Darth has an apologetic for the tree rings. I can't remember what it is. If anybody does remember what it is, uh, if you can give a quick synopsis uh, down in the, in, the, in the live chat, please do. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going back to attack uniformitarianism. This will be, yeah, I know it's in the same category of that kind of geological, like, because he, he, you know, he's like, well, the uniformitarianism doesn't work because X, you know, A, B, and C. Like, yeah. And you know who agrees with that? A lot of geologists who no longer just like, who don't, aren't enslaved by uniformitarianism as if it's a religious dogma. I think Darth is so like, uh, he's so dogmatic in a lot of his beliefs. He doesn't understand that scientists don't have to be with theories things can change things can get you know moved around and stuff but no, sometimes no. but hold on hold on but sometimes uh there are periods of of time uh like during a year when a tree will actually get more than one ring hmm. but this can be corroborated with other trees in the area by taking core samples and denoting the number of rings in those trees as well Right. Okay. Are you? We are have you, trees are you, that are definitively older than Noah's flood. Is supposed no, to be. no, no, no. That's a claim that you can't support. Now, let me ask you this oh, question. Sure. So, if I support, okay, that, are so you? I'm hold on a second. We, we, we. I mean, scientists have found. I mean, easily, there are trees older than. There are living things older than uh, the date of the supposed date that Christians attribute to Noah's flood. Hold on a second, Mr. Wait, so Mr. Know-it-all. Mr. Know-it-all, you, you, you can't you'll control play. yourself. You can't control yourself, can you? Look, he's just trying to hes trying to stretch his legs and run, Gary. You can't fault him for that. You keep muting him, slash server muting him, swearing that he's never coming back, and then you bring him right back in. I mean, can you blame him? He can really kind of push. He can push this a little bit more. I mean, what's he gonna? I'm, you're done. You're done. Your server muted. You know, you know, give it. Give it five minutes. Darth. You know, Gary vents a little bit more, and then Neon's right back in there. I'm gonna ask him another question. Let's see if I can embarrass him some more. This humiliation technique is really working great. I've only been at this guy for forty minutes. I'm just trying. To, I, I'm I, just trying I, to have a conversation. Right, listen, you know, you know, you know what? I have I have asked them to unmute you a number of times. You just can't conduct yourself. How, are you a teenager? Are you a teenager? No, Darth. I'm, no, Darth. I'm, tw I'm 24, dude.
You, you've asked me this okay. before. Okay. I'm not I'm okay. surprised you then, haven't taken it. Then you, need, then you need to stop acting like a fucking 14-year-old. Now, um, are you using uniformitarian, uh, uniformitarianism as a filter in order to conclude the age of the trees? What? Do you know what uniformitarianism is? For the win, J.L. Warren uh, called it by name, uniformitarianism. No, I don't. I don't know what you mean by that. Oh, oh, because you see, because you see, you're going to be educated today, Mr. Knows It All. Okay. (laughs) This is is like one of those like Homer Simpson uh, moments. Like, oh, oh, like he thinks he's really got a one up here. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, you don't know something, and I do. Uniformitarianism. Uniform. Excuse me, I'm tired. You can't even say it, you doddering old goof. Uniformitarianism <laughs> is an ideological belief that cannot be grounded by empirical endeavors. That is used as a filter to interpret certain sense datum datum, such as uh, 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 geological layers. Sense data is plural a day dumb is singular right or tree ring uniformitarianism is a, is a, is a, is not scientifically provable okay or confirmable right that the key to the past is the present right which is why a lot of scientists don't hold to some kind of ideology of uniform like i don't really think he understands that uniformitarianism was not established as some kind of like dogma like a church of uniformitarianism that all physical scientists had to kind of you know scientists in the physical sciences disciplines had to then just ally themselves with i mean there is something to be said about being able to rely on patterns from of nature from the past but there's obviously big upheavals and things that can change things however this attack on uniformitarianism doesn't really matter given the fact that because in in most cases i think uniformitarianism has just been kind of abandoned it um in geology they don't hold to this anymore so bringing this up is really kind of a non this really doesn't matter it's a non-starter the idea specifically that Neon brought up was the idea of tree rings. So what Darth is probably going to end up relying on, like, oh, well, sure. Normally, we would try to tell the age of a tree by its tree rings, and we found trees that are older than Noah's flood. Those rings were magic there by Yahweh. That in order to understand things that we examine, that the things that we examine were formed in the same processes and rates that they are now back then. That's called uniformitarianism, okay? Now, so do you understand how you unwittingly have been educated into uniformitarianism? Uh, I, no, he probably really hasn't. If he's only 24, no. Darth would have been. This would have grounded. This would have been like kind of foundational. Some if, if Darth's education back when he was in his late teens, early twenties, high school, going into college, uniformitarianism might have carried more sway in terms of like trying to explain this to undergrads and shit. And to, to some extent, I mean, you have older textbooks and stuff now. You could try to get away with it, but I don't. I, I really don't think. I don't even think this was a thing that was happening even when I was. And I'm a Gen Xer. I don't think this was something that was like uh, you know held to dogmatically in some weird way that Darth's trying to put out there. Uh, again, this is sort of like his problem with like evolution, the modern synthesis. He thinks this, I think he believes this is all like conspiracy, uh, conspiracies concocted by, you know, different, different little uh, cabals of scientists. Okay. Now is uniformitarianism uh, as an ideological mean, filter mean, is uniformitarianism as an ideological filter scientifically verifiable okay see what he asked him there is using uniformitarianism as some kind of ideological filter is that scientifically viable like did neon say he was using uniformitarianism 
Okay, so you're trying to you're trying to shoehorn me into uniform. Just because uniformitarianism has fallen out of favor does not mean you cannot get an estimate about how old a tree roughly is by counting its rings. Darth hasn't been able to show that there's some kind of disconnect there, or there is a direct connection. Okay, here's the thing. Uniformitarianism, no longer really a thing. It was some kind of weird ideology that a group of cult-minded geologists and some phys physicists came up with. And so, therefore, you can't trust your own lying eyes. And, you know, get, get, you know, hey, you Girl Scouts, you Boy Scouts, get away from those tree rings. Slap, slap. You can't begin to estimate how old that tree is. It, I mean... I mean, I, I'd, I'd expect Darth to sit down and look at all the kids and be like, and how do you know that this tree didn't just materialize five minutes ago? How do you know you didn't appear five minutes ago? What's the foundation of, you know, Jesus. Answer the question. No, sir, 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 do you understand, do you I'm understand the whole I'm not interested in being railroaded into the a whole fam. Okay, mute him. He's done. No, what, what he's doing. Now oh, is he done again? Now is he's deploying the bickering. This cake keeps coming out of the oven and going back into the oven, and Darth keeps promising, okay, it's done. It's not done. Strategy to get out of being questioned, because he doesn't know what he's talking about, okay? First of all... Even the evolution of the trees over vast periods of time, you have yeah. to conform to uniform material. Yeah, you, you have... Mm, no, you don't. Oh, my God. No, you don't. You have to do Yeah. yeah. The only person on here that's going to sound even more like just obviously stupid than Darth Dawkins is Nephilim Free. So the fact of the matter is this. We don't know how many trees, tree rings grew in a year in the past. We know uh, relatively. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Speaking how tree rings grow now but to assume that tree rings only grow one a year and sometimes oddly two a year but what if environmental conditions were different where they grew three or four rings so you see your whole argument that the earth is older based upon uh, uh, tree rings is based upon the, the ideological filter of uniformitarianism. And oops, guess what? Well, it, any, it any also weapon... presupposes that God made trees with no rings. Yeah. Right? yeah. All, all the, the trees bottom... were saplings when God made them? No. That, 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 no. That, that, that's God created a mature earth with mature plants and right. animals. So, so that, and that's another point that I didn't mention. Thank you for presenting it. Now, so... He didn't even realize that he was deploying uniformitarianism as an ideological filter in order to come up that the tree rings do that. Now, well, the tree rings, here's the thing. The reason that dendrochronology and tree rings tend to be a reliable way of getting a good guesstimate of how old the tree is is because using other methods to date the tree's age tend to conform with the number of the rings, like radiocarbon dating. But I guess what Darth will appeal to with radiocarbon dating is, well, you don't know that the rate of uh, rate of like decay in some of those elements was the same then as it is now. Even though the only reason you can be certain about anything now is because God makes it so. And God is a God of rationality and of logic, and he's consistent. But apparently the natural world, which functions and operates under natural laws, function under completely different laws in the past such that we can't trust anything that we do with our logical capacities of reason, which are gifts from God, but we could be completely uh, tricked because of our reason because we just didn't understand that god at some point wiped all the uh, all the you know changed all the rules knocked all the pieces off the board changed the game this is radically stupid because darth is usually trying to make the case that the only way that you can be certain of anything the only way that you can know anything hell the only way that you can even have an inkling of anything is because god allows it and the only reason that you know that a that an elevated body temperature indicates a sickness god the only way that you can do math God, the only reason two plus two equals four, that kind of rationality, that logic, ooh, that consistency, that beauty, God. But it was different at some point in the past so that I don't have to deal with the fact that uh, this take on the Bible that I have could be wrong. Neat, Darth, neat. Okay, so you just completely abandoned the consistency of your worldview 
and attempting to explain this metaphysically to people now and now that you're in the realm of trying to defend a young earth creationist outlook it's like oh yeah 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 yeah. but you can't you can't accept this idea of uniformitarianism why not i was expected to accept a kind of uh divinely ordained uniformitarianism two minutes ago when you were talking about how the only reason that things are st are stable or consistent is because your god has deemed them so but apparently he didn't always do that. So which one is it? He's consistent or he's inconsistent? Let's unmute him. Now, now that I've debunked your appeal to, to tree rings, because you have to appeal to uniformitarianism in order to come up with that conclusion, but you can't empirically demonstrate uniformitarianism, okay? because it's an untestable assumption. You have to have a time machine. Now, can you tell me what other means you can use scientifically to date the age of the Earth? And by the way, I'm yes, my bet's still in it's still in play. Here we go. Setting another trap for you. The radiocarbon dating, sir. Aha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah I, I'm still sticking with the same example. There's a tree called okay. Old Tajiko that's okay. a 9,550-year-old okay. Norway spruce okay. Okay. located in the and, mountain of Dalarma okay. province okay. in Sweden, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's still it's still alive today, so we can study Listen how we can study Listen, how many, I, You're on, ignoring, you're ignoring, no, me, I'm not going to hold on because you're dishonest. Oh, no, okay. so you don't, are you using, are you using uniformitarianism to come up with that age? Uh, no, I mean, I'm just using the fact that, like, we know how okay, fast Okay, right okay, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, what you're doing right now, what that. you're doing right now, you know, you know what? You're really pissing me off. Now? He's just now pissing you off? You've been pretty upset sounding for the entire thing. Because you're being dishonest, and you're the, pretending the like you're is, giving... Garth, please do not. Okay, you you're going to get muted. Straight. You're going to get muted. Gonna get, uh, why is he throwing this out like it's even a threat anymore? He's been muted, like, ten times already. Like oh, I'm I'm sure Neon is shaking in his uh, I don't he Darth still thinks he's a teenager. He's shaking in his school uniform. Muted. You're good. Uh, I should should suggest that that might be like a a thing for Darth. Get muted. Okay. Listen carefully. In order to to count the rings, you have to assume via uniformitarianism that three rings grow at the same so the only reason any of these techniques that scientists use to date or age anything relies on an imposition of an ideology called uniformitarianism that darth believed. like okay it wasn't uniformitarianism and then the techniques right the techniques happened and then this kind of idea of uniformitarianism became kind of a way of explaining a general principle that which they believed was generally things tend to uh age age and change slowly over time or there's there's some there's some uh factors in place here that, that remain constant Uniformitarianism took a hit from that when you take into account that there are there are big swinging changes that can happen uh, in short periods of time that can radically alter uh, certain life forms, geographical features, these kinds of things. So what do we have now? We have a mixed view of these. There is quite a bit of general development, general, slow, gradual change over time that you can still observe and still measure. And there are moments that you can see in geology and in, in things like studying trees, you can see those moments where there were abrupt changes, you know, very, very harsh changes, uh, dramatic changes uh, that occurred under a slow, a short period of time. So you get a combination of the two. It's not one or the other. And there, these techniques tend to reinforce one another. The scientists are not saying like, hey, because we have this ideology, I know how old these trees are and you can't tell me that I'm wrong. They're always going to be, the, the point of science is to falsify that information as much as you can. Somebody comes along and says, that's a 5,000 year old tree. And somebody else comes on, it takes, takes a measurement. And they're like, turns out it's a 10,000 year old tree. Shit, we got different numbers. We got one, you know, one of us is wrong. Then they'll keep going and they'll keep going. And they're not afraid, hopefully, they're not afraid to admit that they might be wrong. Darth seems to be thinking, no, no, science works like religion. Same rate or nearly the same rate overall than they did in the past. Is it a fact that tree rings grew at relatively the same rate in the past as they do now? 
Well, I mean, I mean, each the thickness in between each ring. Will answer vary, but the in, question. In, but in, answer in, in terms the of like question. the number of tree rings. Answer. Jesus Christ! Why is it remain relatively okay, constant? Mute him. Yes. Mute him. We're... Yes, every tree grows at exactly the same rate under the regardless of conditions or anything. Like no, obviously you can have like. This is such a non-starter for him. Like, yeah, you can have situations in which the you could have conditions where the tree is not, you know, the, the you know the tree is going to get more nutrients or less or go through a drought, and it depends on the kind of tree that you're dealing with and what environment is it is it in. Uh, all of those taken to, but generally speaking, for most of the trees that you know that we have, we, we count these kinds of rings. They can confirm the dendrochronology with radiocarbon dating. So if you're kind of suspicious about that, which is how they know that in some cases with certain trees, the, 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 the tree rings might be off. And there might be reasons to explain why those, those rings might be off. But that's better than doing what Dar Doth Darkens is saying. Like, no, they just, they just uh, impose their, their faith of uniformitarianism, and that's what gets them the answers that they were already looking for. This is Darth imposing an enormous amount of dishonesty on uh, anybody in the physical sciences that he would not tolerate even being suggested that he's doing he is trying to say well, no they're just naturally dishonest they're, they're 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 brainwashed by this kind of thing they're going in there with this bias of course darth is not guilty of that at all no couldn't be where is your question he is incapable you see this is this is the problem isn't their brainwashing the problem is is that they're willing to bullshit boulder dash and lie okay i asked okay so it's not cool for neon to suggest that darth dawkins is quote mining but it's perfectly acceptable for darth dawkins to say that neon is lying how is he going to substantiate that allegation ask him a direct question did he directly answer the question or did he pretend to answer the question and just a filibuster does he know for a fact what the rate of tree ring growth was in the past? Does he know that? He did answer it eventually, Darth. No, and what did he say? He said that it would be the same in the past as it is now. Okay, and how does he know that? Uh, he didn't get to that. He said no, the tree rings no. were the same size back then. Well, actually, he did the the last no, second. The point, the point is, the point is, the point is, the tree rings are universal in size. Yeah. That's so what he no see what it is is he was using uniformitarian assumptions, but he didn't know the label for the ideological filter that he was he was brainwashed into called uniformitarianism. Okay, and when I pointed. You're assuming that he was "quote unquote" brainwashed into it. Like, Darth, Darth has not kept up on this stuff. Well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Like I said before, when Darth was in his twenties, yeah, uniformitarianism was probably being expressed in some way, shape, or form in textbooks. But for scientists doing the work after you get a general education, even if you're getting kind of a as the general science background in uh, in a university education, it would have been less of a thing. This has been more of like how it's being communicated to lay people. And now uniformitarianism really isn't much of a thing at all. So th this is this is nothing. There's nothing here. The fact that he thinks that, well, this young man here at the, you know, in, in his 20s has been brainwashed by uniformitarianism. I don't think that's been a factor even in geology for at least like 30 years, 20 or 30 years at this point. So no, that's not the issue. Darth's just shit at science. That out. He just simply ignored it and repeated the same crap all over again. And I want my fellow Christians to notice this, okay? When you confront unbelievers with very significant and credible defeaters for their position, they will pre pretend to debate against that. What's the position? Like, you can... You can have Christians that believe that dendro, you know, just acknowledge that dendrochronology is a reliable way of dating trees. I'm not exactly sure what Darth's trying to do here. But they will ignore what you say, pretending to answer what you say, and then they'll just repeat the same thing all over again. Wash, rinse, and repeat. Okay? Um, 
neon back into the left is, girl. Is, back into the left that's where he was back going. into back into like so 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 mm, no that would be what Dawkins is doing the the magic bullet here is the uniformitarianism thing you you young people have been brainwashed by this science ideology and it's preventing you from understanding what big brains like me gary know about science which is you can't trust anything in the past to have been uniform um but you can trust it now because god it's consistent now i know that the sunrise I know, I know what a calendar is i know what these general changes are look at the trees look at the cycle of the universe look at the cycle of life you know okay but you know what, you know, you can't know what it was like, like, you know, hundreds of years ago, God could have made things happen really, really fast or really, really slow. Who knows? Kind of sounds like I shouldn't trust anything that I see or hear. I mean, maybe I'm, maybe I'm grabbing the wrong implication there, but. Neon, is radiometric isotope dating based upon circular reasoning? Yes or no? Oh, uh, just give me uh, uh, just a second here. Yeah, this is another. This is another trap I have for him. You, you see, he's blinded by his own pride. He thinks he knows more about the subject matter than he does. Um, Neon is radiometric isotope dating guilty of circular reasoning. Uh, depends on what you mean. No, is <laughs> just read this real quick. Only the demonstrated existence of Darth's God would be something science would have to account for when determining if things were similar in the past. Otherwise, nothing indicates it can't be. Radiometric isotope dating that is used to date rocks, guilty of circ. Do you know what circular reasoning is? Yeah, it's not. <laughs> Radio radioisotope dating is not guilty of of circular reasoning. This this is classy. Uh, circular re uh, reasons that appeal to the other reasons, like they're begging the question. No, like, yeah, is is uh, it's windy is, because is, wind is, 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 is listen, listen, listen to me. Wow, you, you know, you know what? Rather than have a conversation like an honest uh, adult, yeah, I you just question, gotta sit dude. there and blah blah blah. Okay, good. Now, Jesus Christ, he is such a fucking thirsty bitch about this stuff. As soon as somebody does something it, 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 in the slightest way disagreeable, he has to jump on it and turn it into an editorial. Like, holy shit, dude. You have talked for the entire thing, and this dude is like this dude has talked a fraction of amount of time in, in comparison. Now, let me ask you. This. I think par parakeet is, uh, might might have talked almost as much. This, this question time. must Rather one than have assume... a You decide to talk. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you you know what? Your yeah. laughing exposes the fact that this is just just a cover up. No, Darth, you right? really said to me. Now, I will, I, you know what? You're going to get server to muted. You're going to get server muted. Happen. Ooh, more server muting. Like, this guy might as well give himself, like, you know, just, like, award himself a donut, you know, every time, you know, he actually does get server muted and award himself something smaller uh, when just when Darth threatens to server mute him. Like, it's meaningless. Um, I agree with you. Mark Reed, and good to see you, by the way. Uh, uh, carbon dating does not use circular reasoning. I know that. You know that. The scientists that use it know that. Darth doesn't. I think Darth read somewhere from an apologist that it does. Some young Earth creationist type. And he's running with it. Probably some of those goobers over at Answers in Genesis. You're going to get server me. You see, this is what you're, you right. claim you're 24 you're years old and again. you act like it's okay. You know what? Mute this. Grandstanding and fixating on the meta. Guy, okay. You see, 24 Holy years old. Fucking and shit, Dora, let him fucking speak for more than a second. You fucking okay. suck. I like Autumn. Okay. No, he, he, he wants to accuse me of grandstanding, and that's precisely what he, he's doing. He's not really addressing what, what I'm saying, okay? He's great. Now, appealing to the tree rings is only true if and only if uniformitarianism is true. But you would need a time machine. You would not need, no, you don't need that. Like, holy shit, dude, you are dumb. There's more than, <laughs> fuck, Darth Dawkins is really stupid. Um, I, I mean, just just trying to like to, like figure out like this is this is how he's like uh, you know settled in on on decent explanations for for this stuff. Um, 
Mark Reed. By the way, he can't server mute anyone. He has his little room he can mute people in, but he claims he will server mute them. Yeah, I, I think I don't think it's caught up with him. And and I think JL had mentioned before these particular rooms. Foxy's running this one, so he doesn't even really have the ability to mute or kick him from this channel. Um, just Foxy can, which is why I mean that's why he comes back. So, but I, I think I think Darth likes to hear himself say that he can server mute somebody, server ban them, uh, because it harkens back to those days when he ruined multiple servers on Discord because they foolishly gave him the ability to do that, and he wiped them out. He just cleared everybody out of them. It's pretty funny. Bane, to go back to know that's true, but there aren't any time machines. Are they McFly? So you have to go back and see, this is interesting. In order to really know things work like that, you'd have to go back and see it. You'd need, you would need to go back and see it with a time machine. But Darth can assume the uniformity of nature because it reflects the mind of God. But now he's positing the notion that there's, there could be a non-uniformity of nature that somehow also reflects the mind of God. I'm not exactly sure how this is, but like when were things consistent enough that we can rely on God as a source for everything? I'm just, I'm trying to understand Darth, I'm trying to understand why you're not contradicting your God. Um, JL writes, it's all based on the notion that scientific laws could be different in the past because of God, but the evidence not indicating that implies a deception falsifying his truth, God. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's where I was going with my question too like what is he thinking because <laughs> like i understand that he's trying to bridge like like when he gets into like young creationist mode young earth creationist mode he's got to defend it using the the tools and the tricks that he's got and that's slightly different when he's doing the whole precept thing but now if you bridge the two together this seems like a little bit of a weak point here okay hello mcfly there are not any time machines, are there? Appealing to direct observation of the past because you couldn't be certain that it's anything like the present while simultaneously claiming that your God is the source and the sustainer of the consistency of the laws of nature is mind-bogglingly stupid. I mean, it, it, you're done, Darth. Not through. You're done. Like a cake. You're baked. This is dumb. Okay. So he's been brainwashed into uniformitarianism. Now, when it comes to radiometric isotope dating, one must first presuppose that the Earth and its content are eons old first in order to count backwards from a putative daughter element by the r rate of half-life decay to the putative daughter the parent element that is not how that works you have to start off with an a priori non-scientific assumption that the earth was in fact not created six to seven thousand years ago because if it is why would you why would you assume that to begin with? I think this is interesting. What he's saying is like, well, they're just as guilty because they're assuming that's not the case. And that's how they're coming up with this dating thing. Like, okay, so what are they assuming instead? They're not assuming an age and then finding them, finding the elements that match that age. That's not, that wouldn't work for radiocarbon dating. That's or radioisotope dating. This is not how that's, that's not how that's going to work. It is possible that it was then counting backwards from the daughter element isotope based upon the half-life rate of decay to the parent element on the periodic ta ch table, counting backwards would be incorrect. You do, they do not have to assume the age of the universe. They're, they're, they are evaluating the age of, of the rate of decay of the element. And then a comparison is done between those. And they have to be careful about what kind of elements they're looking for and under what conditions. Because certain certain elements, you know, their, their rate of decay is not going to be uh, 
either isn't going to be standardized. I can't remember which one is actually like super rapid. Depending on where they form, they're not isolated enough to happen in, in kind of a vacuum where you can really count it. There's, there's too many variables that would affect it. So they don't, they won't work. So that's why they use, I think, a ha I think there's a handful, half a dozen that are considered the most reliable. He does not understand radioactive element decay. He just doesn't get it. And he's just assuming, again, that these scientists, conspiracy-minded, go at this thing with a preset notion about how old the Earth is. And notice what, how, he, how he revealed it. Oh, it's more than six or 7,000 years old. Okay, so their assumption is that not, not the Bible. That's how they, very scientific. Yeah, I would agree. That would be absurd. I've never heard a, I've never heard a scientist say, like, okay, so what we do, we, abs we assume that the earth is not just 6,000 years old because of the Bible. I mean, get real. That's not what they're doing. So they start off with an unprovable assumption that the earth is eons old first, and because it's eons old first, then we can count backwards oh. based upon the half-life decay. No. But that's circular reasoning. You know what? Okay, it would be if that's how they were doing it. Maybe you could make that. I don't, I think that's awkward. Maybe you could make, that's not how they're doing it. They know the rate of decay and they can compare other things to it. That's how they, oh God. All he's got to do is find a video on this. That's all he's got. A video that's not from Answers in Genesis. Somebody has been boring holes in his brain with this bullshit. Oops. You see how they're blinded by pride and they're... Oops. He is literally regurgitating a talking point from young earth creationists that is so laughable. Most of them in like Answers in Genesis are very careful about talking about this, this one in particular, this particular talking point, this little bit of rhetoric in front of certain people. This is an insider baseball kind of one. This is the one you use with a bunch of dubious people um, within the, who, who are already convinced that Christianity is true and want to think that young earth creationism is a viable explanation for how the natural world works. That's how old the world is. It's how old the universe is. You can tell them that and they'll be like, oh, okay, and they'll go out and maybe spread that to their friends and family. But you want to keep that thing like a submarine, under the surface, hidden. Don't talk about it. Don't be Trump. Don't talk about that sub. Let it do its stealth business, right? You do not go and say this part out loud in front of people who know better because you'll get laughed out of the room, the party, the bathroom stall. I mean, talking about this is fucking embarrassing. This is a stupid thing to try. This is a stupid point to attempt to make. And he's doing this and he's just like, and this is some grandstanding for him. Like, ha ha, gotcha skeptics, gotcha scientists, gotcha with your own logic. Like, no, you didn't. You don't even know how to define these processes, and you're talking about a criticism that doesn't even begin to get to the point of how they work. Brainwashing. We know the Earth is old. We know creationism is false. Wait a minute. So what's interesting is this. I thought creationism was unfalsifiable. What? Wait, wait, wait. What? Did you know that the American Academy of Sciences Sciences wrote a paper against creationism and intelligent design? And in the paper, they said that creationism was not falsifiable. But then several paragraphs down, they started detailing certain things in science that falsified creationism. Um, Darth? There's two different kinds of creationism, at least two. There's actually more. But if they said, were they talking about creationism in all of its varieties and permutations, or are they talking about young earth creationism? Young earth creationism is, un is falsifiable. They can falsify that. The claims made by young earth creationists are, large, are untrue. And they have evidence and techniques and studies to prove that wrong. But creationism wouldn't be falsifiable because you could always shift the goalposts. You could add years on for 
however old you think the earth is or you could be an old earth creationist and just accept that yes uh, observable universe roughly it's over 14 billion years old life on earth when three and a half four billion years ago blah 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 evolution yep we concede it but they're still creationists it depends on the flavor of creationism you're talking about. And I'm almost willing to bet that when Darth is talking about this particular study, when they said, hey, you know what's falsifiable? Yuck. Young Earth creationism is falsifiable because it's false. This is a paper published by the American Academy of Sciences. I love how he's laughing at this. Like, I'm like, I can't believe these clowns. Like, you don't know how to fucking read, Darth. And you're laughing at scientists? You can't make this stuff up. Mm, mm, and, by, and by the way, this, he says that creationism is false. Well, wait a minute. Let me, let's uh, unmute him for a second. I have a quick question for him. This is going to this is this is going to be another trap for him. OK, hey, Neon, are all conclusions in science provisional? What do you mean by provisional? You don't. Do you understand? Do you, do you have a basic working education in science? Do you have a basic working so you're, knowledge? You're of grandstanding science? by not answering that uh, question. Okay, what okay. No, you're it? grandstanding. You are grandstanding by accusing me of grandstanding. I asked you a question. Mature, Darth. Really mature. <laughs> wow. You understand science, and you don't understand what it means when somebody says, are all conclusions in science. Do you oh, know what the word provisional means? You know, Do you oh, know what the word oh, provisional oh. means? Do you know what the word provisional means? Do you know what the word provisional means? Is it would it kill Darth to actually just clarify in what sense he's using the term? Do Are you know what the word provisional means? Arranged or existing for the present, possibly to be changed later. Uh, yeah, sure. That's I right. can say that. Uh, uh, conclusion okay, okay, okay. No, no yeah, sure. I'm asking you. Okay. Yeah, sure. Are... Hey, calm, calm down, Darth. Get, ca get caught up. Whew. Get that nitro pill in you before your heart blows out your mouth. All, okay. Are yes. scientific yes. statements. Yes. Are they, okay. yes. You know, you know what? Your parents raised a real asshole. You know that? I don't care. Well, oh. And the pack of wolves that raised Darth didn't do him any favors either. Well, okay, yeah, what is yeah, that? yeah, what is yeah. That? You know, you know what? You, you know, you know what? That's if an one of my kids behave story. like you, no, it's not an ad hominem. No, it's an insult. Learn the, <laughs> the difference between an ad hominem and an ad insult. Ad Juan. Hominem. It's not an ad hominem. What is an ad hominem? An ad hominem is an insult. I'm just kidding. It's not an insult. No, uh, no, it's, it's no. An insult. Yeah, what's an ad hominem? It's an attack on the man. But it's when you it's when you say that some irrelevant characteristic of the opponent makes them wrong, like saying that that makes their argument wrong. That's what it is. It, the argument's wrong because that person is bad, or you know something about them is off. Therefore, we can't trust their argument to be accurate. That would be an ad hominem because you're attacking the person, not the argument. <laughs> Wait, Darth was raised on well, the sense of like not not like child rearing, but raised like a, as in a, like a like a slap hog. I mean, I think so. Yeah, I think he was kind of raised like cattle. That uh, you can't. Okay. Did I say? Did I say you were wrong? A smart ass. Did I say you were wrong because you're an ass? Did I say you were wrong because you were an ass? Did I say you were wrong because you're an ass? I'm wrong because I'm. So there was no ad hominem, was there? Are you going to apologize to me? I don't know if that's true, though. I think it was implied earlier on that Neon would be wrong because of something. Eh. No, I'm not going to go back and revisit that, but yeah, whatever. But uh, yeah, I agree with uh, Michael Deaton here. It's like, it's not an ad hominem, it's an insult. Here's the one time Darth will be right in this whole conversation. Yeah, and watch him grind that, that any credibility that that could have bought him, he'll just grind that to dust. He'll, he'll, he'll pound it in the sand. Are you going to apologize to me? Are you going to apologize to me for falsely I'm accusing me of an ad hominem? Okay, okay. No, you I'm know what? Goodbye. You're done. Future. Mute him. Uh, actually, Mark Reed, I do agree with you on that one too. I think that that's one of the things where, like, they'll try to say, like, if if Darth wants to pretend later on, like, if they're having a conversation and somebody says, "Hey, you just ad hominem me," uh, then he'd be like, "No, it's not an ad hom. I'm not saying that your argument is wrong because I don't like you, but because I think you're weird, right?" Then they'd have a legitimate thing here. But it does seem pretty clear for somebody like Darth, if he if he he will impugn a lot of negative things about the person to try to break down what he thinks their stances are. 
whatever they're whatever case they're attempting to make. Um, so I, I kind of agree with you there. The, the one bad thing, though, is that oftentimes um, what Darth is usually trying to ad hom against is the not the claim that the the uh, opponent has made, but the one that Darth has uh, straw man them in, <laughs> into making. Like when he said that Neon said that mutations cause all changes, just mutations, not any of the other components of like natural selection and genetic drift. He's like, oh, you're saying mutations account for it all. Neon didn't say that. When Darth did that kind of thing, Neon could have really done some grandstanding with that and been like, hey, you just changed my position. You just volunteered me one. Now you're straw manning me. And Darth would be, how dare you accuse me of straw manning you? Even though he would have had him dead to rights, but Darth never would have seen it. He wouldn't have acknowledged. Uh, Dee Dee is like the evil half of Captain Kirk when he was split by that transporter accident. This would also mean there's an altruistic Dee Dee out there somewhere. That's just science. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. I'd like to. I'd be interested to meet that one. Like he's like he's only, he's charitable to a fault. He's like the dude in uh, uh, what was that the Good Place? Um, uh, the guy that I, uh, Doug Forsett. Yeah, he lived in the Canadian wilderness, and he like he he would literally he would go out of his way to save like a snail with a broken shell. Mute him. We're done. We're, we're done with that ass. We're done. You're an asshole. Oh, oh, you're a complete man. arrogant asshole. You're a complete asshole. Do you know? Do you asshole. know? Complete asshole. At this point in the conversation, the more when Darth says asshole, it's, he sounds like a Valley guy for some reason. That I do and can have civil interactions with people on a daily basis, even people I vigorously disagree with, because they're not assholes like you are. Not assholes. Wow, he is getting so worked up. Like, he's like shaking out of his pants. He's so angry. Okay, but you know what? Being the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm one of the older people here on, on Discord, okay, I don't put up with your youth, youthful shit your assholery, and I'm going to call you out on it. And it's not grandstanding. You're the one who's grandstanding. You're the problem. You're the one engaged in assholery. Again, lack of self-awareness here. Simply stunning. You're a despicable person, right? I mean, yeah. he has been scrolling pretty much all evening, really. Is, so that, is Foxy observing this from a parallel dimension? Like, are there components in his reality that are missing from mine? Like, he lives in our reality, but his version's like a director's cut, where the scene, the, the missing scenes are all there. Because I'm not literally not seeing the parts that he's describing. I don't, I don't get this. I mean, he's hey, not been answering hey, any hey, questions. I'll, on I'll that. just, I'll, I'll just put the nail in the coffin. Okay. Oh. This is the nail in the coffin. You ready? You mean like all those times you, you, you threatened to server mute him and keep him gone, like he would be permanently done, but then he came back? Like, all is it really going to be final? And how many notes has Darth Dawkins taken so that in another year and a half he can come back and be like, oh yeah, Neon, well, we had this conversation. Ready for this? Right? Did he not assert... Mr. Lumpkin. Yeah, no, I get that. I've been going way too long with this one. I was going to split this into two, but I kind of got into a zone here. So I'm just going to do this one in a, as a full one and then hope that people just watch this in installments when they can. <laughs> I apologize for the length of this one. It's a lot of Darth. And probably too much of me. That all conclusions in science are provisional. Can I get some feedback? Did he not agree with that? He did, but you didn't get any further after that because he wanted to make sure that he knew what way you were using provisional. And then you blew up and went completely like, you know, um, completely, you know, like cat lady crazy on him. Um, yep. I mean, he, I apologize. That's maybe offensive to a lot of cat ladies. They're usually super nice, but I think you know what I mean. Definitely did say that. Yeah. I mean, okay. somebody else is here. I mean, I just, right. Yeah. He definitely agreed to it now. Mm -hmm. Now. So when you hold up a provisional conclusion as a defeater for something else, then it doesn't act as a defeater for something else unless the person that you're presenting to accepts the provisional conclusion. Because the provisional conclusion isn't necessarily true. So he's... That is simply one of the dumbest things I've heard 
from Darth in a long time. And I've heard a lot of them in this conversation. But that is ridiculous. Like, I'm not going to accept these kinds of, I'm not going to accept provisional. I'm like, okay. But you can accept statements of ultimacy. So would it make Darth, I wonder if a Gary would feel better if science just came up and said, no, this is how it works. Like, in some cases, they can you can you can show physical experiments like he does just does not understand this the notion of it being provisional and falsifiable is that under certain circumstances you can prove that it's not always the case there are certain things though that they can know for certain you know just based on certain mathematical or physical impossibilities those can be demonstrated they're still provisional this idea that like oh no well you know, and, until until your God comes and tells me with a stamp of approval that it's always that way and always will be that way, I don't have to believe it. He's just admitted that reality could be a totally different way in the past than it is now. So his God is provisional too. You can't tell me that, that, that reality conforms to any kind of, any sense of consistency because he just held out the possibility that these trees could have developed multiple rings and developed all sorts of like all these all the dating and everything of these isotopes and stuff that could all be different in the past without direct observation thanks to a time machine you can't know it but he can he can completely assert the idea that a god makes reality consistent with laws of nature but now those laws of nature are not consistent without direct observation from a person fascinating Taking a provisional idea and saying, well, I'm accepting it as true, but it could turn out not to be true tomorrow or the next day. But this provisional conclusion falsifies young earth creationism. Does everybody see the monumental problem there? I see some problems there. Agreed. I like Dustin. Dustin's, uh, I'm impressed with Fox's ability to be heard with his head is so far up Darth's butt. He and Parakeet are in there making themselves at home. Is that why it's so hard to make out what Fox is saying? Because it's muffled? He's saying that something that isn't necessarily true and could turn out to be false tomorrow falsifies creationism. <sighs> provisionalism does not entail or falsifiability does not entail that something could just be completely overturned i mean there's always a possibility that it's some kind of ground baking breaking paradigm shifting thing but that is oh, this is so stupid no it doesn't the how does darth prove something necessarily true given the contradictions he's already made in this what's necessarily true about some kind of fundamentally consistent law of nature when he's given that up I, i'm getting tired the only way for that to be substantive is the person you're speaking to has to accept the provisional statement as true so all you're just simply saying is, I hold... So as long as that per that person, the person that doesn't accept provisional statements is true, is an irrational lunatic, God's got a chance. To this provisional true truth, okay, that the earth is old, but it could turn out to be false tomorrow, okay? Right? Now, how about, how about this? Unmute it for a second. Let's see if he can't be an asshole for one minute and answer one simple question. He has no incentive to be not an asshole. He has every incentive to like lose his mind. I hope he just starts dropping f bombs and all sorts of crazy shit. Do it, Neon. Don't be a gentleman. Okay, Neon. Is it impossible for Jesus Christ to return tomorrow, next week, next month, or next next year? Is that impossible? No, but that doesn't prove a younger. Okay, stop, stop, stop right there. Why don't you, why don't you calm down? Okay, guess what? Calm if down. Jesus... Darth has literally been self-soothing for this entire time since the, since between the last time <laughs> that Neon was on. If Jesus Christ were to return tomorrow, the next week, next month, next year, whatever. Okay. 
that would validate creationism, wouldn't it? No. Not young Earth creationism, anyway. I'm using it interchangeably at this point because Darth was being wimpy about it when he was trying to take on that uh, Academy of Sciences review about it. If creationism equals if, if creationism equals young Earth creationism, and Jesus, it turns out Jesus is real. So the Christian outlook on Jesus being, you know, the, the Son of God, or or whatever, and he returns. That would not automatically mean that th that would not follow that the young Earth creationist take is correct. That does not necessarily follow. Darth is going to try to say, no, it necessarily follows because that's the biblical understanding of the narrative. Mm, no, it's not. When he says biblical, that just means his dogmatic take on it. Uh, not necessarily, no. No, necessarily, because Jesus said in Matthew... Okay, look, it would, look, it would follow that if there's, if Jesus returns, quote-unquote, and the entire narrative is true, then creationism would be verified in the sense that Jesus and God, Jesus, God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit, created reality. Then creationism would hold. But young Earth creationism would not be verified. Matthew 19, to the religious leaders, he said he referred to Adam and Eve being made in the beginning by God. He was specifically referring to the Genesis account of creation. Now, if that same Jesus returns in your lifetime, would that validate young earth creationism? No. It would validate creationism. It would validate the idea that there, this, this being probably is the creator of the universe. Therefore, okay, reality is a creation from this creator. Young earth creationism that, okay, the universe is only six to 7,000 years old. Why would that be verified? No, and I, I can explain why, too. No, no, no. Okay, stop right there. You are such a dishonest person, it makes me want to vomit. Oh, that's too bad, Dawkins. I, I wanted to see, I wanted, I really want to hear Neon's answer. Okay. The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, Jesus said, okay, that Adam and Eve were made in the beginning. Okay? What was he referring to? He's referring to in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and then it lists that the creation was made in six days. So what? So what? How is that 6,000 years? And the language there, semantics, is there was an evening and a morning, a first day, evening and morning, a second day. No, that's not, no, that's not a good reading of Genesis. Whenever the Bible uses the word day with evening and morning and an ordinal, it always refers to a 24 hour. It does not. Go check some scholarship on this, Darth. You're fucking wrong. You're just, you're fucking losing at the Bible. That is not a safe assumption to make. A period of time. Now, the fact of the matter is this, okay? Do you know who T.H. Huxley was? Do I? No, you're not going to answer. Wait, what? Is he even? Oh, what? do you know who T. H. Huxley was? No, or we're not really having a conversation, though, are we? Okay, T. H. Huxley. <laughs> Good for you. Actually, no, I, actually, actually, I'm educating you. Okay? That's no, you're not. You're lecturing him. You fat dink. Okay? Yeah, because, you, you, because you'd be no, no. It, I'm it's educating really, really you. Pathetic that you have now, to now, T. H. Huxley, T. H. Right. Huxley was Dar Darwin. He was a a preeminent anatomist and physiologist. Eight nineteenth century. He was very famous. He was very smart, and he was Darwin's bulldog. Okay, and guess what? He knew the Bible, and he believed in uh, an old world. And he believed emphatically in evolution. And he said, if you interpret, and this is somebody who's of your kind, okay? And he said, knowing the Bible, he said, if you read the Bible consistently, 
you cannot believe in an old earth. It is. Oh, so T.H. Huckley had a reading of the Bible that conforms to young earth creationism, therefore you should as well. Uh, Mark Reed, uh, if uniformitarianism is unreliable, then how does Darth know how long a day was in the past? Great question. I guess we can count on that because of the way the language is used, even though he's talking about how it was translated from Hebrew into English. And despite the fact that there's at least two separate Genesis accounts slammed together in the book of Genesis, one where, you know, things are just kind of created and poof, and the things go on. And then there's the one where it actually talks about God creates Adam, the man, and then the and then he has the help meet search, uh, search for a friend and then gets knocked out, has a rib taken out and poof, women pop up. Two different accounts. And he's confident, like, no, 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 this is how a day would have been. A day would have equaled, a, you know, this, no, no. And why would I count on that? Like, you know, those trees could have gotten all those rings really quick. It's impossible. Okay. Well, yeah, if you read now, the Bible and take it literally, sure. You're not, you're not, under, you're not, you're not understanding. Okay. <laughs> The That's Bible very, is very clear. Very Listen, I'm, I'm, okay, but very, what, what very I'm saying important. to you is this. If Jesus Christ would return tomorrow, this yeah. will validate creationism, okay? Now, it would. It would validate creationism. And I'm, what I'm pointing out is one of your own, the man who was probably one of the most important people in history besides Darwin for getting the widespread acceptance of the theory of evolution was T.A. Tuckley. Okay, and he knew the Bible. Now, if Jesus Christ were to return tomorrow or next year, okay, that would validate creationism. Okay, but I, you I told don't, me I don't necessarily think that's true, and I can explain why. Oh, no, 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 what he would no, okay, I'm trying to explain the truth and you spoke hey, the truth. Yeah. If he's able to return to the earth and prove that he speaks the yeah. truth because he is if. the truth, then whatever he said is true. You know what I think would be hilarious? God does turn out to be real. Jesus, and it's actually the God of the Christian Bible, right? So it's Jesus. And Jesus comes back and starts telling Christians everything that they got wrong. It'd be hilarious, too, if he'd been like, no, uh, Peter was the rock. I founded my church. You guys were all supposed to get, uh, why aren't you confirmed Catholics? There's a whole organization over here built for this. Oy. Protestant Reformation probably shouldn't happen. Therefore, let, 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 let me explain something to you. Let me explain something to you. There is no way. Okay, please mute the hecklers. Okay, what you're doing you're, is you're, you're, you're continuing. Putting... You are continuing to be dishonest here. Okay, it's it's really charming to see this. Like, well, if Jesus came back and confirms everything I say is true, wouldn't that then confirm that everything I said is true? Sure. Yes, but if you just say, well, when Jesus comes back, doesn't that automatically entail that everything I say is true? No, it doesn't. People who attempt to amalgamate a biblical model of creation and old earthism and evolution are pissing on the Bible. They are conforming the plain and clear language of the Bible to a, a a consensus that the earth is old and that evolution who gives a shit about ancient near eastern cosmology we know it's wrong so what does darth still does darth believe in the firmament because if you read that clear language there it seems to me to be pretty it's pretty obvious that in those in one of those accounts they believed in a firmament and there was a separation of the waters and the earth, the realm of the earth is between the waters below and the waters above. That's actually how the flood is described, even though there's actually elements of multiple narrative sources being used in you know, the account of Noah. It doesn't just rain from above. The firmament opens and that rain, that, that water above reality poof, comes into the world and starts to flood it. But the waters from below burst forth from the ground. That was the cosmology that they had. We know that that's not right. But a plain reading of the of the text would have you believe that there is, in fact, a firmament. Does Darth deny that? 
It's true. Now, the fact of the matter is, this is no, it's not grandstanding. The fact of the it matter is. is, if Jesus Christ were to return tomorrow, okay, yes, that would yeah. validate creationism. Okay, but he hasn't. But he hasn't. So no, no, no okay, not you're not. You're, okay, can can you can you stop being an asshole for one can second? Can you actually prove the Earth? Okay, is goodbye. Years okay, old? good. Yeah, I can. Okay. All I need is to have a perfect eyewitness testimony that the earth is young rather than old. God has given that testimony. Jesus gave it. No, he didn't. When he said Adam and Eve were made in the beginning. Okay? How do you get 6,000 years from Jesus because he said that? First of all, we don't know that he said that. We know somebody wrote an account claiming he said that those words were at the very least attributed to him but we don't know that jesus said that and we don't know that jesus thought that we don't know that jesus believed it when he said it i'm just taken as a a plain understanding of what the statement indicates and we don't know we definitely don't know that that entails that jesus is conforming to a young earth creationist model of reality now here's the thing he could have been if ancient near eastern cosmology at the, in the first century in in the levant was still the Earth, the Earth is only six, seven thousand years old in their in their particular tradition. I don't know that it was. I'm not that great at biblical uh, biblical scholarship, but trying to trying to make the case that like, oh no, Jesus said it. That's a, that's a theological and dogmatic claim that Dawkins is trying to make. Like, well, G, like that's not a newspaper article or a documentary that we have a recording of what Jesus said. An author wrote that and 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 wrote that Jesus said it. That does not automatically mean that Jesus did say it. If you think that, you need usually you need to appeal to some kind of theological and dogmatic authority to make your case for that. And outside of that particular dogma, it's probably not going to be very persuasive. Now, here's a problem. Here's a here's a problem for you. Here's a problem for you, okay? The Bible makes it very clear that there was a judgment after the fall of man. Death was implemented, and other things like suffering and disease and other environmental conditions occurred after the fall of man by the judgment of God. Okay? Now, if you say that one could interpret that the earth is old alongside the Bible, are you saying that that is a legitimate interpretation? What? Off the phone, me and quickly, sorry. Yeah, he can't respond, Fox, if you're... Oh, Jesus. Are you saying that that's a legitimate interpretation? A, the, a legitimate interpretation of the Bible? What do you mean? Is it, a legitimate, is it a legitimate interpretation for people who are Christians who believe the Bible is the word of God, but that the Bible is written in such a way that it will allow for the earth to be eons old rather than young. Is but that yeah, legitimate? I, I, think, I think that uh, you can do that. I don't think it's fair to, but also um, given that, because I, I, I do think that it's probably implying a much, it's not implying that that the, uh, the universe is 14 and a half billion years old because they wouldn't have known and they wouldn't have known what the universe was they thought that there was some kind of primordial chaos which was water and that our reality existed in a division separated out form kind of like a cyst uh, uh, from the waters above and the waters below that was kind of an ancient an early ancient near eastern cosmology that that much i know so if we're just going to assume that that's like okay well that was accurate for them then i guess that's supposed to be accurate now this, I mean, this is just, it's, it's painful having this kind of conversation because it's like, look, if you're honest about what you're doing when you're reading the Bible, you need to be, they, they need, Christians need to be able to reconcile the fact that some, that some of the, the things that are mentioned in these books are just wrong. There isn't a firmament. We just, we know that. That's like trying to claim that you know, the world says, you know, the, the Bible says that the world is flat or something like that. Like, one, I don't think it actually does. It just talk about the four corners of the earth or something like that. Um, but these kinds of things don't do Christians any kind of service. And then trying to say like, well, these people back when these, these narratives came out, that's what they thought. Yeah, sure. That's what they thought. 
that was their that was their take on this kind of stuff. But they were wrong about it. And that stuff got included into their narratives because that's how they thought things worked. We'd do the same thing if we were trying to create horror, you know, some kind of like uh, holy scriptures or something like that. I think that Christians can believe in evolution okay. um, if they don't take a literalist stance. On okay, the- stop right there. Well, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Okay. The Bible says that God, as a part of his temporal judgment, introduced thorns and thistles. Oh, boy. Uh, this is going to get dumb. Um, actually, interesting, uh, Tovar, that he has. Um, he usually just ridicules them. People who come up and yeah, flat earthers, I've, I've heard him on you know, from other conversations. I think even Tom Rabbit has recorded some exchanges that he's had with them. And he just, yeah, he just laughs at them, mocks them. After the creation. Okay. Now, that happened after Adam and Eve were here. How is it then that thorns and thistles appeared in fossils? Then thorns and, th- and thorns. So you're saying that uh, that after the fall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Mister, Mister, Mister. I'm wait, wait, so no, I smart. I just Answer the question. I just what kind of childishness is this? Right. right. So you're saying that you're saying that after the fall of man, then God made plants to have thorns and thistles. And you're asking how could it be possible that okay, uh, okay. that thorns are and there, thistles are found in Are there are there are there are there thorns? Are there thorns? Are there thorns on plants in the fossil record? Uh, I would assume so, yeah. yeah. That's right. The Bible is very clear that after the fall of man, the Bible is emphatic as to the historicity of Adam and Eve. Do you want to dispute that? I, I'm not to do with the point, though. Like, you're hey, still having to prove it. No, 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 no. You see, now, you see, now you're... De- I don't understand what Darth is trying to do with this. Like, oh, yeah, well, you know, here's the thing. It said that God made thorns and thistles after uh, the fall of man. And they show up on the fossil record. Okay. Collecting and dodging because you don't know what to say. You're I said, is the Bible. You, you see, you can't real stop real. being you can't You're stop being an asshole, can you? You can't stop being an asshole. Do you know that there are Darth can't stop saying his favorite word? Asshole. People that I have conversations with all the time where I don't have a problem with. Because you but know we, what? We they're not because they're that. because they're not being they're not being an asshole. You're being an asshole right now, and you won't stop. You know what's worse than you being an asshole is that you're totally shameless about being an asshole. That's worse than you being an asshole. You have no shame. Okay, right, so I, yeah. I would like evidence that you have a civil conversation now, with. I want you. Okay, you know what? You know what? I, you know what? Have you I have given you so what? many chances. I've given you so many. I've given you so many chances. At what chances? And you just won't stop being an asshole. Oh, that's uh, that's the problem, huh, Darth? Okay. Goodbye. Mute him. Do not unmute him at all from here on out. He's... You sure? They're probably talking right now. I I would love to meet his parents. I would just love to. Uh, I would love to meet. <laughs> no, I don't know okay. if I would. Uh, I've tried I can, to meet. Oh, I'm sure that I'm sure Neon's parents would love to meet you, Gary. I yeah. can. Oh. I can. I can. I can just. I can just imagine. You know, asking them, "What did you do to this child to make him turn out this way?" Yeah, Neon was out of control. I mean, just verbally abusive and ranting and... Oh, wait, that was Gary. Where he has no impulse control whatsoever. Yeah, no impulse control. Wait, is he talking... He's talking about him... No, he's not. The reason why I get into a tirade on people is not because I don't like what I'm hearing. It's because of their behavior, and they all of a sudden they launch off into a community college lecture, crap that I've heard hundreds of times before, and they're not informing me, and I don't want them to waste my time. I want to talk about specifics, right? Where do they grow human beings like this? Does anyone believe he's 24? Can you imagine having that piece of garbage as an employee? Wow, he just shotgunned through all of his greatest hits. Can you imagine, like, the only one he didn't head on was, uh, well, can you imagine dating him? But that's because he's a guy. If, 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 if Neon were a girl, it would have been, like, can you imagine dating that? 
Like, I mean, he literally hit everything. Can you imagine being that person's boss? Can you imagine being their parents? I mean, what an asshole. Can you imagine having to actually experience anything in real life with someone as assholey as Neon, who clearly was out of control and yelling and just, I mean, he was, he was practically on fire. He was so full of rage and hatred for um, the God of the Bible and me, Darth Dawkins, uh, apostle of God possible fourth member of the trinity blah 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 i mean come on uh wow let's see how tom caps thank you tom rabbit <laughs> okay short and sweet good enough all right yeah so there's that um shrink that back down so yeah um i'm surprised i actually made it through that whole thing what a hell of a thing to do on a Sunday evening. All right, I'm going to get out of here because I think there's going to be a live stream starting at 9. Actually, I think Maya Atkinson usually does a stream at 9 p.m. Eastern time on this, so I'll be getting out of here just in time. And I'm, in fact, before that starts, I'm going to run and uh, pick up a few things from the store. Um, with that being said, um, I hope you all had a good time. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I, I guess I apologize for this one being long. Don't recommend this one to your friends unless they take it in small dosages. Um, but thank you all for being here, uh, especially those of you who are in it for most of the full three hours. I really appreciate uh, your endurance and stamina and uh, tolerating this kind of my shenanigans. But I will uh, play a little video here and get out of here, and I will see you guys next time with another video. It will be much shorter because I will not be doing, you know, an hour long video of this. Although there is another one that's about 45 minutes that I will cover. I promise I, I'm going to try to cut that one short. So anyway, good night, everybody. Catch you later.